very good morning. I would like to welcome all participants to our working session eight. My name is Marcin Walecki. I'm head of democratization department, and it is my great pleasure to be a moderator for this morning session. Uh, the working session eight, tolerance and non-discrimination, we will particularly focus on equal opportunity for women and men. We'll discuss the implementation of OEC action plan for the <coughs> prevention of gender equality, and we'll discuss the issue of violence against women. And please allow me very briefly to mention a few important points as a guidance for our morning discussion. Women's political participation in political public life, while obviously the progress has been made, women remain underrepresented in politics across the OSCE region. Uh, even through our very important MC decision 0709, which urges, strongly urges participating states to consider possible legislative measures which would facilitate a more balanced participation of women and men in political and public life, and especially in decision making. Currently, women form only an average of 26.7% of members of parliament in national legislatures of OEC participating states. I hope this session will look at uh, good practices and effective measures we can take when it comes to addressing this disbalance when it comes to political parties, parliaments, um, and we will also discuss some innovative tools such as gender audits of uh, political parties. Violence against women is another very important issue which we will cover during this session. We are all familiar with 2019 OEC-led survey on the well-being of women in South, Eastern and Eastern Europe, which revealed that 70% of women, or an estimated 16 million, have experienced some form of sexual harassment intimate partner violence or non-partner violence, including psychological, physical, and sexual violence since the age of 15. But I would also like to stress that the purpose of this session is also to review the implementation of the OEC action plan for the promotion of gender equality, particularly that we are celebrating our 15th anniversary of OEC action plan. The questions which should guide us for the discussion today are what challenges do OEC participating states experience in achieving gender equality and what can be done to overcome them? What measures are effective in promoting equal participation of women and men in the political and public life, including the security sector? And finally, which legal policy and practical measures are effective in preventing and combating violence against women, including sexual harassment and online violence? The session is uh, structured in a traditional way. Um, obviously, the first 15 minutes uh, will go to a brief opening words, uh, technical information, and particular remarks by our distinguished introducer. This will be followed by two hours and 15 minutes for interventions from the floor. As always, during the last 15 minutes, delegations of OEC participating states will have a possibility to exercise their right of reply and if there is time, we'll hear final summary reflections from our distinguished introducer. I was informed that the list is still open. Uh, remind that the speaker list is at the back of the head table where the participants can still sign themselves. We will close the list when it reaches 50 speakers. Um, as always, seats in HD plenary hall are designated as indicated on signs placed around the table. So I would kindly like to ask participants to respect the sitting order arrangement throughout the whole session. Live streaming of HDM is available. Filming with cameras and video cameras is only permitted by accredited journalists and only during the opening and closing plenary sessions. No other audiovisual recordings should be iterated. Uh, let me now move to our introducer, and I would like to, uh, it is my great pleasure to, to welcome Honorable Member of the Kyrgyz Parliament, Ms. Elvira Sarbaldieva, who is the former Chair of the Forum of Women Parliamentarians. She was elected first time to the Parliament of Kyrgyzstan in November 2015. She's a very active member of Economic and Physical, uh, Physical uh, Committee. Previously, she was a very successful entrepreneur. Um, she graduated from the University of Bristol and is currently one of the most active women political leaders in Central Asia. It is my great pleasure to give a floor to Honorable Member of Parliament. Thank you. Thank you, dear Martin. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, delegation members, representatives of the civil society sector, distinguished colleagues. Uh, 
Allow me to greet you on behalf of the Parliament of Kyrgyzstan and express uh, our greetings uh, to the participants of the forum. I am happy to see men and women here. Gender equality pertains to everyone. We all want to live in a peaceful, successful, democratic society where the interests and rights of all members of society are represented and are defended. The guarantee of full, equal participation in all spheres, including uh, governance, the political involvement, the security, and law enforcement are all that represent the interest of half of the population of our world, that is women. Although in reality, often women have to work very hard in very unequal conditions. <clears throat> the um, macho policies, policies, unequal access to financial resources, uh, the lack of support for families are all uh, stereotypes that stand in the way of women's prosperity. In addition to this, we need to also include gender equality at the legislative level. We also need to establish effective mechanisms of monitoring in order to make sure that the plans of action do not remain merely on paper. Draft laws uh, touch each and every one of us, and they need to reflect the needs of society. The voices of women which is a guarantee of variety, needs to be heeded. And participating states that have committed themselves to the council minister's decisions of the OEC on the participation of women in political life must promote this aim. Unfortunately, in the OEC region, parliamentarian women make up an average 26.7%. In spite of the fact that there have been efforts to involve women more into politics, there are no countries uh, where they would not be up against intimidation, threats, and attacks, uh, which are psychological attacks or sexual intimidation. With regard to the interparliamentary interparliamentary assessment conducted in 46 countries, harassment and sexual attacks against women are an everyday occurrence, which undermine gender equality and the values espoused by democracy. This uh, study has shown that 85 percent of parliamentarian women have been victims of psychological uh, intimidation or attacks when they were uh, serving in parliament. Many were attacked, raped, or beaten. Also, we have all heard about harassment in the workplace and the global campaigns to combat unequal pay for women. <clears throat> this data is very alarming. However, allow me to appeal to all delegations and all participants to promote the implementation of the Council decision under Article 7 which encourages all participants to raise these issues in public debates, to promote awareness raising, and to undertake equal measures to achieve these goals. In order to reduce violence and, and that impact on women which stand in the way of their full political involvement. Here I would like to note the efforts of OD of the OEC uh, in their work with democratic institutions with regard to gender awareness raising. In Kyrgyzstan, for example, uh, Odir's work is very important with political parties in order to improve the uh, party structures, also with regard to gender equality in politics. In the Kyrgyz Republic, we have consistently undertaken efforts to ensure gender equality. We ratify the basic international treaties and conventions and political documents on women's rights, including the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, the Peking uh, Platform of Action, and the Sustainable Development Goals. From 1996, we have undertaken and realized five national programs on the improvement on women's situation and on gender equality. With regard to the issues of uh, upgrading our laws, we need to note that Kyrgyzstan became the first country in the Central Asian region where the parliament has uh, passed laws on the guarantees of the state on equal opportunities for men and women in 2003, which was then uh, upgraded in its draft of 92, and also the note 
on the uh, defense uh, uh, from uh, uh, household violence, which was also uh, passed and then uh, updated in 2018. One of of our other achievements in Kyrgyzstan, we can also note some other achievements. In our constitution, we have guarantees of gender equality and the principle of non-discrimination. The law has broadened the set of measures that are aimed to defend the family and marriages. Also, with regard to private contracts, uh, the age of consent and mutual consent and the obligatory mandatory official registration by the state of marriages. There are also special measures that we have established that provide for the representation of men and women in certain state agencies. In other words, no more than 70 percent of one gender with regard to deputies in the parliament and the central electoral commission and the deputies of municipalities, auditors in the accounts chamber, the uh, Supreme Court judges, constitutional court judges, and the deputies for the ombudsman. Thanks to the special measures, all of these agencies ensure a minimum representation of men and women, and there was gender equality. In spite of this, each time we have local elections to the local parliament, we have very negative signs. We have a drop in the number of deputy women in the local Kineshis. And so from 2004 to 2016, the number of women in the local uh, mini uh, regional parliaments has dropped by one third. Currently, it is only 10%. That is really not enough. In order to solve this problem by the deputies of the parliament uh, was initiated and adopted in three readings a, uh, an amendment to our laws with regard to the election of lo to local Kineshets where we have proposed to have a temporary special measure to reserve a quota of 34 percent for women. In August of 2019, uh, just two months ago, the President Surabai Benchikov signed this very important and very uh, necessary document uh, f uh, in this draft law. And also in the executive powers, we also do not have sufficient representation of women, especially when this concerns to such important manager roles as the mayor, the uh, district hakim, and governors. For the time being, uh, we are really lagging behind, but the parliament is really actively promoting these issues. As of January 1 of 2018, uh, the share of women in political and other roles made up 27 percent, while overall in all of uh, the state officials, that is 40 percent. In other words, we are going through a uh, competitive selection process, but somehow uh, the highest executive uh, roles, um, we've only had a very low percentage of women. Also, uh, which is only 14 percent, at the same time, violence against women is a very acute problem. Uh, abuse in the home and violence uh, in homes is a very major problem. Also, uh, when women and girls uh, are um, ma married too early, it means they never go back to education. Very many uh, girls who are minors are doomed to poverty because uh, their opportunities to make a living in the future are hampered. In order to eliminate discrimination against women, the parliament conducted a great deal of work, the result of which is we have had amendments to the criminal code and the family code of Kyrgyzstan, which establishes criminal liability uh, under religious uh, ceremonies and marriages for underage girls. The Kikinish of uh, Kyrgyzstan in March of 2016 passed another draft of the law on the protection uh, and uh, prevention of violence in the families. Now, this law was supported by O. Deer with regard to uh, how this law corresponds to Kyrgyzstan's obligations under the OECE and with regard to international standards on human rights. The outcome and uh, the conclusion of this document of the OECE said that the law contains very many positive aspects and overall corresponds to international standards in the area of prevention of family violence and preventing it and defending women from it. Participating states need to make greater efforts in order to make sure that young 
people, minorities, the elderly, and all genders are represented in uh, the democratic institutes to ensure variety. We all know that human rights is equal to women's rights, and we cannot live in a world where men and women are victims of violence in the homes, in the streets, or in parliament. Participating states need to do their utmost to prevent and to make sure that all women victims of violence are defended, that they have recourse to courts, to provide assistance to victims, to ensure that this process should consider and involve the most vulnerable people in society. The OEC institutes must make efforts in order to finance and implement projects in order to protect women. Oh dear must continue its work within democratic institutes to promote the involvement of women in political and social life for the benefit of democratic values and the security of all of us. It is only a society that provides inclusivity and for the rights of all women will be able to make a contribution to the progress of the entire world. Thank you very much. I would like Thank you. To the Member of Parliament, Sarbaldieva, for very good opening remarks as an introducer, uh, putting a lot of emphasis on the issue of violence against women, also women politicians. Uh, for sharing with us a good practice uh, from Kyrgyzstan. Indeed, Kyrgyzstan, if I can say so, is a shining example of how effective the special temporary measures can be, both when it comes to national uh, parliaments, but also would like to congratulate you on the recent changes and adoption of special temporary measures on the local level, which is indeed in line with MC decision 0709 and recommendations um, recommending special temporary measures. Also. Uh, thank you for mentioning those important legislative changes um, which uh, deal with protection of women's rights, and we know that you've been personally behind many of those initiatives. And your recommendations are well noted, and thank you very much indeed for them. Now I would like to move uh, to the floor and inform the participants that we have still a list open. Um, we would like to allocate 2 minutes 30 seconds as a speaking time. Um, and I would like to remind all the participants that all interventions should be presented in meaningful, orderly, and respectful manner, observing the time limit and focusing on recommendations related to the topic of the session. I would like to remind us that criticism is welcomed but should be constructive and would like to encourage all of us not to present lengthy prepared statements but rather submit them to our distribution, uh, document distribution center. Um, once again, I'm reminding all of us that participants can only speak in the capacity in which they are registered, and only entities registered on the speaker list can take the floor. I would also like to remind the participating states that points of order can only relate to procedural issues when it comes to the substance of the matter under discussion. They're welcome to use their right of reply. And I would like to close with those technical remarks and now give the floor to the first speaker on our list, which would be Finland on behalf of the EU, followed by the Russian Federation. Finland, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I am delighted to speak on behalf of the European Union and its member states. The following countries align themselves with the EU statement. North Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Moldova, Armenia and Georgia. Gender equality is at the core of these values and is enshrined in its legal and political framework. It is essential to comprehensive security and contributes to sustainable peace. We remain committed to efforts to promote uh, gender equality as, as well as efforts to promote the empowerment of women and girls and their protection as a, uh, as a priority across all areas of action. Gender equality is vital to achieving the sustainable development goals and we comment the OSC's role in supporting participating states in their efforts. We remain committed to the promotion, protection, and fulfillment of all human rights and to the full and effective implementation of the Beijing Platform for Action and the Program of Action of the International Conference on Population and Development and the outcomes of their review conferences and remain committed to sexual and reproductive health and rights uh, in this context. As we mark 25 years since the International Conference on Population and Development, we must ensure that all women and girls have access to sexual and reproductive health services. 
Violence against women and girls is one of the most widespread, persistent and devastating human rights violations in the world. We welcome last year's ministerial decision on preventing and combating violence against women, which provides collective commitment to address the prevalence of gender-based violence. Rape and other forms of sexual violence continue to be used as weapons of war. It is of utmost importance that we tackle conflict-related sexual violence. UNSCR uh, 2467 recognizes the needs for a survivor-centered approach and the needs of children born from conflict-related sexual violence. We condemn the sexual and gender-based violence, intimidation and harassment online and offline that female journalists encounter when carrying out their work. We therefore welcome the ministerial decision on the safety of journalists which underlines the importance of addressing the distinct risks that female journalists experience. The intimidation and harassment experienced by female journalists is mirrored in the threats, intimidation and harassment faced by female politicians. It is essential to address this if we are to increase women's political participation. States involved in conflict mediation should ensure women and underrepresented groups are meaningfully represented at all stages of the peace process. In the run-up to the 20th anniversary of the UNSCR, um, 1325 on Women, Peace and Security in 2020, we welcome the OSCE's contribution to the development and adoption of the national action plans for Albania and Ar uh, Armenia. And then uh, a couple of recommendations. Uh, we call on OSC participating states and the OSC institutions to continue their efforts towards the achievement of gender equality and for an OSC wide action plan on women, peace and security. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, and particularly for those very good recommendations. Uh, and now I'd like to give a floor to Russian Federation, followed by the Council of Europe. Thank you, moderator. Distinguished colleagues, the Russian Federation views uh, the achievement of genuine equality between men and women across all areas, as well as the protection of rights of women, girls, protection of the family, motherhood and childhood to be a priority for government policy. Achieving these objectives is uh, absolutely vital to ensure harmonious political, economic and social development uh, in each and every country. We can promote uh, human rights. Uh, by taking action at the government level, although civil society organizations also have a fairly important role to play. We stand convinced that we need to offer equal opportunities to men and women. We don't need to artificially equalize the number of men and women employed in a given sector. First of all, we need to provide uh, opportunities for women to get an education, uh, learn a trade, find a job, and to reconcile family and uh, pr professional duties. To this end, in the Russian Federation, we have programs which allow women to get an education or to retrain, all the while raising a child. Furthermore, in the Russian Federation, both women and men, as well as uh, their close relatives, can take paid parental leave. What's of critical importance is the fight against uh, violence against women. A key component of this battle is uh, preventive action including improving women's economic straits, debunking stereotypes about uh, the social roles men and women are supposed to fulfill, supporting families, and uh, taking systemic steps to combat social disadvantages and poverty. What's equally important is multilateral and bilateral efforts uh, to combat sexual exploitation of women who still make up a big chunk of human trafficking victims. Traditionally, Russia has played a very active uh, role in all international fora focusing on the protection of women's rights. Furthermore, our country has hosted a number of such uh, meetings. In 2018, for instance, in St. Petersburg, we held the second Eurasian Women's Forum, which uh, brought together over 700 participants from over 80 countries. We wanted to express our gratitude to Ms. Uh, Dosarin for coming to Russia in July 2019. We believe that the meetings we held with the gender section were most useful and constructive. We hope that we can continue in the same very fruitful vein. Our main recommendation to the relevant OECE um, entities is to pay greater attention to discussions about women's social and economic rights, about how to uphold them, because currently here at the OECE, the balance is uh, substantially skewed towards discussions of women's civil and political rights. Thank you. Thank you for those recommendations. The next speaker is the Council of Europe, followed by Serbia. Mr. Moderator, when it comes to gender equality, women's rights, and ending violence against women, Council of Europe is the origin of some of the most progressive standards, such as the Istanbul Convention and the recent recommendation to tackle sexism. 
In response to Me Too and other movements that have heightened awareness of persistent sexism in society, Committee of Ministers adopted in March this year a recommendation to stop sexism, which includes the first ever internationally agreed definition of it. The recommendation stresses that sexism is a manifestation of historically unequal power relations between women and men, which leads to discrimination and prevents the full advancement of women in society. Sexism is defined for the very first time ever in a dedicated legal instrument aimed to tackle it via a comprehensive list of measures and areas where it occurs. The text requests that member states monitor progress in implementing its guidelines and to inform Gender Equality Commission of measures taken and progress achieved. Turning to the Istanbul Convention, progress with its ratification and the implementation are on track. No state has the perfect solution to all the issues around preventing violence, protecting women and prosecuting perpetrators. But working to the, together, they can rise up to the challenge. And this is what monitoring is doing. When Grevio's expertise is combined with the political will of states, it can and is bringing positive change. While we have a cause to be concerned about the recent threats leveled against the very ideas enshrined in the Istanbul Convention, we are not discouraged or disheartened. In fact, with the passion, dedication and unrelenting work of its supporters, the Istanbul Convention will play a critical role in countering retrogressive movements. However, it is essential that we stay united and be unequivocal in our support for the Convention. We should not allow short-term political gains that play to the tune of individuals or, or movements that hang on to patriarchy and misogyny. At times when opponents of the Convention have stepped up attacks on the Convention, we should not shy away from it, because that means shying away from the reality of discrimination against women. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council of Europe. Thank you for observing the time. And I would, as always, suggest that those important remarks and very timely are submitted to our documentation center for further distribution. Now I would like to give a floor to Serbia, followed by delegation of United States of America. Mr. Moderator, I join the statement made by the European Union and would like to speak in our national capacity. Over recent decades, the position of women has considerably changed in Serbia. These changes are specifically seen in the role of women in public life, political life, as well as the role of women in business. Important uh, legislative changes, awareness raising with regard to gender equality, and the growing involvement of women at the local and national levels enabled women in Serbia to take advantage of the opportunities presented to them to be more visible, more equal, and to be represented in all segments of public life. Today, the Serbian National Assembly has over 90 women, which represents one-third of all the deputies. Certain most important state functions are carried out by women, for example, the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Prime Minister, and the uh, President of the National Bank of Serbia are all women. According to the same trend, certain ministers of the most uh, important ministries uh, are women, for example, the Minister of Construction, European Integration, and Justice. Women also hold managerial roles in the judicial system, the presidents of the administrative and constitutional courts, as well as the, uh, head, the pub, head public prosecutor. In spite of the enormous progress made with regard to the position of women, they remain a very vulnerable group in society. This has been seen in the statistics and the number of women attacked and killed in the world today. In order to face the problem of domestic <coughs> violence and to promote the safety and equality of men and women, Serbia in November 2016 passed a law on the prevention of domestic violence. This law enacts uh, most of the provisions of the Istanbul Convention that Serbia ratified in 2013, broadening the framework within the Serbian judicial system uh, as the first and main preventive legal tool in this area. Uh, 
some of the other innovative measures are urgent measures undertaken, such as the temporary removal of the perpetrator of violence from the family home and the temporary prohibition of the perpetrator to contact or approach the victim. The law also provides for the mandatory coordination between competent institutions through the group of coordination and cooperation, which uh, is made up uh, of a prosecutor, a police officer, a social worker, representatives of uh, uh, workers, uh, uh, representatives from the health and education sectors, as well as representatives from the labor sector, if necessary, as well as civil society. Thank you very much indeed, and an apology. We, we have to observe the time to allow everyone to take the floor. Now I would like to give a floor to the delegation of the United States of America, followed by delegation of Malta. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. In June, the United States reaffirmed our commitment to advancing gender equality and empowering women and girls through the release of the U.S. strategy on women, peace, and security. The strategy focuses on increasing women's participation in political, civic, and security endeavors to prevent and resolve conflicts and on creating conditions for long-term peace around the world. The strategy aims to ensure women are no longer absent from or overlooked at the negotiating table, and it modernizes international programs to improve equality and empower women. In February, the United States launched the Women's Global Development and Prosperity Initiative, which seeks to empower women worldwide to fully participate in their economies, enhancing prosperity, stability, and security. Last year in Milan, participating states adopted a ministerial decision on preventing and combating violence against women. The decision noted that, quote, violence against women and girls takes many forms, which can include domestic violence, sexual violence, harmful practices, trafficking in human beings, sexual and other types of exploitation and harassment. No country can afford to have women blocked from advancing in the workplace because of gender-based discrimination and sexual harassment. Azerbaijan and Belarus have extensive lists of banned jobs that women are unable to occupy, limiting their participation in the economy through legally supported discrimination. Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Armenia, and Belarus still lack specific laws against sexual harassment in the workplace. We are alarmed by the results of a study conducted earlier this year on sexual harassment within the OSCE as an organization. It is imperative that the OSCE get its own house in order as it seeks to promote gender equality elsewhere. This pertains to regular and field mission OSCE staff as well as short-term mission members, including election observers. The United States also urges all participating states to redouble their efforts to strengthen and implement laws aimed at preventing gender-based violence. We are concerned that protections against domestic and intimate partner violence have been weakened in Russia. NGOs note that the Russian Ministry of Internal Affairs statistics indicate that approximately 12,000 women die annually from domestic violence in Russia. At the Milan Ministerial, participating states committed ourselves to take action against address of violence, abuse, threats, and harassment, including through digital technologies directed at women. The United States recognizes the particular threat facing women in politics and women human rights defenders. And we urge all states to step up efforts to ensure women operating in these spaces are safe online. Our mothers, sisters, and daughters deserve no less. Thank you. Thank you very much, U.S. Delegation, and thank you for mentioning very important and timely MC decision 418, and I hope we'll have a chance to discuss it in more details. Now I would like to give a floor to the next delegation, delegation of Malta, followed by delegation of Canada. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Malta aligns itself with the statement delivered by the EU delegation, but I would like to uh, avail myself of this opportunity to make some additional remarks in my national capacity. In the 21st century, gender equality should not only be a right that is safeguarded in legislation, but it should be de facto reality for both women and men in all spheres. And this cannot be the case unless the international community makes every effort to man maintain the fight against viol violence perpetrated against women. Gender equality has established itself as a core value within multi-society. In this respect, Malta was one of the first countries to ratify the Istanbul Convention, which was also integrated into domestic law. 
Moreover, measures were adopted to further strengthen the Commission on Gender-Based Violence and Domestic Violence, which has been assigned the responsibility to oversee the implementation of the legislation as well as the implementation of the National Strategy on Gender-Based Violence and Domestic Violence Strategy. Moreover, the EU co-funded co project, Breaking the Cycle of Violence, was launched in January 2018. The project has various scopes, including identifying the behavior and attitudes of victims, engaging boys and men in the violence against women, and encouraging victims to report what happened to them and seek necessary assistance. It also aims at raising awareness amongst vulnerable groups, such as migrant women, lesbian, bi, and trans women, women with a disability, and also to actively engage children and youth who are members of the Scouts and Girl Guides to become more aware of violence against women and domestic violence. In conclusion, Malta is ready to work with the OSCE in all activities aimed at fighting violence against women, also in line with the ministerial decision on preventing and combating violence against women, which was adopted last year in Milan. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Malta. And I would like to give a floor to the delegation of Canada, followed by Humanists International. Moderator, Canada offers the following recommendations. That OSCE participating states take meaningful action to implement the 2004 OSCE Action Plan for the Promotion of Gender Equality and to fulfill Ministerial Council Decision 8-14 to elaborate an addendum to the Gender Action Plan. That OSCE participating states implement all the commitments agreed upon in the Milan Ministerial Decision on preventing and combating violence against women. That OSCE participating states recognize and take concrete steps to counter the pervasive and disproportionate abuse, harassment, and violence against and violence women face online. That OSCE participating states fully recognize the relevance and benefits to our collective security of women's full participation in all decision-making processes, and that UN resolutions on women, peace, and security are reflected in OSCE decisions and commitments. The participating states partner with domestic and international civil society organizations to address systemic barriers that drive discrimination against women and girls and that ODIR and the OSCE Gender Section continue their efforts to assist participating states in the implementation of best practices regarding women's equal participation in public and political life and eliminating violence against women. Moderator, the achievement of gender equality, the empowerment of women and girls, and the realization of their human rights are key Canadian priorities and should and must be key OSCE priorities. Advancing gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls is the most effective way to eliminate poverty, create lasting peace, and achieve sustainable development. We must address the systemic barriers that drive discrimination against women and girls and ensure inclusive consultation and engagement on all issues. In Canada, one of the ways that we've attempted to do this is by ensuring gender-based analysis in implementing, is implemented in all government decisions, such as the federal budget, to ensure that women's perspectives are fully taken into account. Women's empowerment and full participation in leadership and decision-making processes are fundamental elements of democratic societies that are genuinely inclusive, representative, and sustainable. Canada is proud of its gender equal cabinet and reaffirms the importance of women and girls seeing themselves reflected in political leadership. <coughs> women in positions of power, including parliamentarians, journalists, and human rights defenders, are disproportionately subjected to online violence and harassment. This threatens democracy and can limit the full participation and representation of women in political and civil life. Canada condemns in the strongest terms all forms of gender, sexual and gender-based violence wherever it occurs. Sexual and gender-based violence is a serious human rights issue that must be addressed, including in the digital context. Achieving gender equality does not rest with women and girls alone, however. Men and boys have a critical role to play in transforming unequal power relations and challenging social norms and gender stereotypes. Societal change cannot and will not be achieved by focusing on women and girls alone. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Canada. You did what every moderator loves. You started your intervention with listing recommendations. Thank you very much indeed for that. And now I would like to give a floor to Humanist International, followed by Political Movement Group 24. Uh, thank you. The Poland was one of the first countries in Europe to grant women voting rights in 1918. It historically has had an active, vibrant women's movement. However, in the more recent times, gender equality and the rights of women in Poland have come under serious threat. The UN Working Group on Discrimination Against Women observed after a country visit to Poland that 
the rise of religious conservatism questioned some of the gains women have fought for. As the working group points out, gender equality cannot be fully achieved without respecting women's reproductive rights. Yet access to reproductive health care services in Poland has become even more restrictive and there exists significant gap in sexuality and human rights education. Indeed, this, uh, despite commitments on education made under CEDAW, including advice on family planning. The OEC Ministerial Council decision number 4 slash 18 renewed the call to ensure access to justice, effective uh, investigation, persecution uh, of uh, perpetrators, as well as adequate protection, rehabilitation, and reintegration support for victims of all forms of violence against women and girls. However, a report by Human Rights Watch published earlier this year finds that inaccessibility of government funding in Poland has led organizations to cut staff, diminish uh, geographic coverage, and reduce essential services for survivors of domestic and other gender-based violence, leaving significant uh, gap in uh, shelter, counseling, and legal support. Moreover, uh, threats from the Polish government to withdraw from the Council of Europe Convention on Preventing and uh, Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence cannot but leave us with the impression that combating violence against women is not a priority issue for Poland. It seems clear that uh, in the area of gender equality and violence against women, Poland currently falls short. We call on Poland as an uh, OSC uh, participating state to reaffirm its commitment to gender equality and to the Istanbul Convention in full and demonstrate this commitment uh, by drastic uh, changes at home. Thank you. Thank you very much and thank you for observing time limit. I would like to give the floor to Political Movement Group 24 followed by Parent All Russian Resistance. Thank you very much, moderator. My name is Rudy Bilsdell. I am from Group 24. The government of Tajikistan has not been upholding its international obligations aimed at uh, re ensuring respect for human rights uh, in that country. The government uh, has, in fact, committed many violations of uh, women's rights. Supposedly, gender equality, equal opportunity is being ensured for men and women. But this is not so. For a number of years, there's been a discriminatory policy aimed at women who wear the hijab. The dictator, Mr. Mamali Rahmanov, has in fact on a number of uh, occasions humiliated these women. Officially, they cannot uh, enter public uh, buildings. Often in the streets, they're harassed by policemen who force them to take off their hijabs. As for violence against women, there are lots of facts attesting to the fact uh, that violence is being committed against women, often by spouses who uh, abuse their wives, children, that is, daughters, and activists uh, seeking to ensure respect for human rights. There's information in the media and online about uh, these instances. Also, there's been a great deal of violence against uh, ordinary women not involved in politics, and this has been committed by policemen. For instance, Radio Liberty in Tajikistan in 2019 published an article about uh, violence committed against a 70-year-old woman, Estad Kurbonova, by policemen. Policemen stripped her naked, and after she was uh, released, in fact, uh, burns were found on her body. Another article, Radio Liberty again, 2019, Ms. Yuldosheva was uh, sexually assaulted by policemen when she went to file a complaint at the prosecutor's office. In fact, the policemen brought criminal charges against her and she was forced to flee the country. Let me give you another example. Deutsche Welle, 6th of July 2019, wrote an article, published an article entitled uh, Female Hostages. What do females who fled Mr. Mamali Rahmanov's regime say? There are many examples of the horrors being committed on a daily basis in Tajikistan. Thank you very much. I would like to give the floor now to Parent or Russian Resistance, followed by Rosa Primavera News Agency. 
Здравствуйте, господа. Спасибо за предоставленное слово. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Of late, we've heard the international community complaining about the fact that the Russian Federation has not uh, passed the law on domestic violence, has not uh, adopted other legislation aimed at rooting out domestic violence and discrimination against women. Now, when such proclamations are made, often erroneous statistics are cited. Uh, they've multiplied the figures by a factor of 10. And these are disseminated by supposedly free NGOs. But in Russia, all are equal before the law. And this is why we have not uh, adopted this piece of legislation. We do not understand why we need to single out domestic violence. In our country, we have dozens of uh, provisions in the criminal code which impose tough sanctions for violence, regardless of who it was committed by and against whom. Whereas European laws, which uh, regulate domestic violence, we believe contain discriminatory and anti-democratic norms. Let me be a little bit more specific. For instance, the Istanbul Convention calls for us to cast aside a key legal norm, that is, the idea of innocent until proven guilty. Flagrant, uh, there are flagrant violations of this principle as uh, restrictions and protection orders are imposed immediately once one of the spouses files a complaint. The other spouse might be thrown out of their own home, they might be banned from seeing their children, all based on groundless hearsay, unsubstantiated hearsay. So one party to the dispute deserves their unreserved trust, supposedly, while the other is afforded no trust at all, has no opportunity to protect his or herself. This is why the Istanbul Convention is discriminatory. Number two, the fact that we don't need to prove the guilt of the spouse uh, against which the complaint has been lodged exacerbates the fact that there's the concept of psychological abuse in there. According to the Committee of Ministers, the Council of Europe, psychological abuse includes teasing, humiliation, and also a so-called fixed gaze. Recently, uh, it was said that uh, the woman simply needs to say that she felt herself uh, be humiliated in her own eyes, and uh, criminal proceedings can be launched because there is no need for evidence for witnesses. Well. It's all based on the subjective opinion of the woman, in fact, how fixed the gaze that was cast upon her was, whether she felt humiliated. So any argument becomes grounds for criminal proceedings being brought. It means that anyone can be proclaimed a criminal. Because there are no objective criteria for determining what uh, psychological abuse is, uh, we're opening the door to a free-for-all, to these provisions being applied in an arbitrary matter in a bad faith. To Rosa Primavera News Agency, followed by delegation of United Kingdom. Thank you. Hello, thank you for your attention. On the dangers on, of the cultural turn brought about by the Istanbul Convention. More than 20 years, the German legislation has been working to bring about a cultural turn to fight against uh, domestic gender violence. What kind of result can Germany present to the international community after 20 years, when every successive government has domestic violence as a highest priority? What, how did the data evolve? Uh, uh, how did the data of female death evolve over 20 years? In 1999, Germany had around 200 female de death to domestic, due to domestic violence. And in 2018, the death count is still the same. There's absolutely no upward trend when we look at the statistical data. So what kind of trend can we observe? The first thing is an increased interference of the state into family affairs despite protests by the population. There's a reason why the Germans associate that behavior with experience of Nazi Germany of the 1930s. The negative Nazi experience is suddenly not as important compared to the horrors of domestic violence. We can observe the second result in the legal sphere. Leading German experts are sounding the alarm about the destruction of the rule of law. Their sense of the conflict lies in the question which principle is more important, the presumptions of innocence or the principle that the woman is a victim which must always be protected. Why this dilemma has to be decided in favor, favor of female victimization and how this is coupled with movement's emancipation remains unanswered by the contemporary feminist organizations. One gets impressions that the problem of domestic gender violence is being used as an instrument to create an atmosphere of fear and guilt. The goal of all this, including the Istanbul Convention, is not the fight against gender inequality, but rather to establish the dominance of a supranational and anti-democratic bureaucracy. This is why thousands of people in Europe are protesting against this convention. The erosion of legal norms is influenced by the so-called principle of evolutionary interpretation that are based on non-normative sources. Such soft law acts 
can significantly change the sense of previously signed documents and impose principle on states that they did not sign when they ratified certain conventions. I call for more transparent, broad, and objective discussions of such innovations with all of the members of the international society. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. I would like to give the floor now to the delegation of the United Kingdom, followed by independent human rights protectors. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The UK aligns itself with the EU statement delivered by Finland and would like to make some additional comments in national capacity. On 16th of July this year, the UK government introduced into Parliament a landmark domestic abuse bill. Whilst domestic violence is not gender specific, the majority of victims are women. The bill's introduction followed extensive consultations during which the government sought the views of victims, support organisations and frontline professionals. The bill introduces the first ever statutory definition of domestic abuse. It recognises the many forms that abuse can take and encompasses, but is not limited to, psychological, physical, sexual, economic and emotional abuse. The UK's Preventing Sexual Violence and Conflict Initiative, PSVI, remains a top priority for the UK government. We aim to ta tackle stigma faced by survivors of sexual violence, secure justice and shatter the culture of impunity by holding those responsible to account as well as strengthen efforts to prevent sexual violence and conflict. The UK will host a PSVI international conference on 18th to 20th November in London to mark five years since the global summit to end sexual violence. The UK will continue to ensure that the Women, Peace and Security Agenda is front and centre at the Security Council. We need to strengthen the implementation of UNSCR 1325. We are doing this by supporting women's meaningful participation in peace processes and increasing support to women resolving conflict countering violent extremism and building peace at the grassroots. In November 2018, we convened the Women MPs of the World Conference. The event brought together over 100 elected women parliamentarians from across the globe to celebrate their achievements and discuss how to strengthen visibility and further empower them. Globally, over 130 million girls are missing out on the education they need to develop essential life skills. We are committed to championing, championing 12 years of quality education for all girls through the At Leave No Girl Behind campaign. Our Girls Education Challenge is the world's largest fund dedicated to girls' education. Finally, the diversity and inclusivity of our own workforces and cultures is extremely important for us all. It's only by harnessing the varied perspectives and ways of thinking and the creativity, credibility and trust that these bring with them that we will achieve the outcomes we want to see and leave a better world for the next generation. Thank you. Thank you, UK, for those helpful remarks, and thank you for observing time. I would like to give the floor now to independent human rights protectors, followed by a delegation of France. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, for giving me the floor. My name is Bertrand I'm a lawyer from Tajikistan, an independent rights defender. Ladies and gentlemen, in our society, women must have all rights irrespective of where they live. And that is the right to life, freedom, work, and rest, education, health, uh, political, and civic rights. In a country where all of the basic rights are trampled upon and women with, reg with regard to their own physical uh, demands also have human rights, should also possess additional rights. If the rights of men are trampled by governments and their institutions. The rights of women are also violated by traditions and husbands. Today, one of these terrible traditions and a law in our government, and that is the pre is the virgin test of brides in. The Khatun Scrigens, 27 brides were checked by medical experts before their wedding night, after which uh, they had determined that they had already had had sexual relations. The expert doctor said that last year, among such tests, there were also instances where brides, it was, they had seen that the brides had gone through uh, operations to reestablish virginity. Over the past years, this ha tendency has risen. The government of Tajikistan and the Committee on Women's Affairs has also looked at the issue of religious clothing and the wearing of hijab. In the Russian Federation and the Investigation Committee of the Russian Federation are trying to look into the terrible crime 
against a woman involving a Tajik migrant who's, uh, who killed his daughter. For a year, the judicial system of the Russian Federation has not concluded this trial. And this perpetrator is uh, supposedly not fit to stand trial. And basically, they're trying to protect him for standing trial. There have also been cases of uh, other women who have perished. We call on diplomats and ministers of foreign affairs of the Republic of Tajikistan. Don't try only to promote the rights uh, of others. Try to protect the rights of your own citizens and to find the perpetrators of the murder of Alexander and Sonova. Commentation center, and I would like to give the floor now to the delegation of uh, France. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I associate myself with the statement of the European Union. I would like to make a statement in our national capacity. Gender equality between men and women was promoted as a major national cause by President Emmanuel Macron. Women should uh, earn as much as men to take part in part politics and be free to decide on their own bodies to fully enjoy their right for sexual and reproductive health. France uh, has a, a feminist uh, diplomatic corps, which establishes to reduce the inequality between women and promote women's rights. In 2019, this was established during the G7 presidency of France. In promoting equality during the G7, ministers signed a joint declaration to make this a major global campaign. In Biarritz, the heads of states and governments committed themselves to harmonize rights for women through a partnership of Biarritz, which pulls together the best practices with regard to women's rights in the world. Participants commit to implement at least one of these laws in their national laws. This partnership is open to uh, greater membership, and I invite all participating states of the OECE to join this effort. Combating uh, professional inequality as combating uh, violence against women are priorities of the French government. France uh, is uh, for the universalization of the Istanbul Convention. Many of the non-member states of the Council of Europe are looking into joining this uh, full-fledged and ambitious uh, uh, instrument. It is a complete and ambitious document. We need to have greater consultations to combat domestic violence. And this was launched at the beginning of the month. Measures were undertaken by the Prime Minister in order to make sure that women victims of violence should be protected and to be protected uh, and removed from uh, their aggressors. Also, other progress with regard to har harassment in the street and online harassment. We needed to react to these measures because uh, uh, those who harass women are often covered by their shameful silence. France continues to uh, fight in order for the universal um, we, for, for the universalization of the Peking uh, platform. And we will be welcoming the Forum on Generation and Equality organized under the aegis of uh, UN Women uh, with Mexico. International regional organizations, including the OEC, will play an important role in this effort. And finally, I would like to invite the OECE to strengthen the implementation of this action plan on the promotion of gender equality within our organization, but also in participating states. All possible measures to combat violence against women and to promote equality need to be encouraged. While the world is changing, women remain free and equal in rights. That needs to become a reality. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. I would like to give a floor now to information agency Regnum, followed by delegation of Tajikistan. Um, Good morning. Starting in the... To early 2000s, a campaign was begun to root out and prevent uh, domestic and gender-based violence in many EU countries. Laws were adopted. Over the course uh, of that whole period, there were ongoing reforms to national legislation. However, 20 years have gone by, and we see that uh, the results are rather terrible. The statistics bringing together facts about serious uh, crimes within families and killings of women have not budged. In Spain, there was a law on domestic violence adopted in 2003. Then in 2004, a law on gender-based violence. 
15 years have gone by, and the statistics show that the number of women killed has uh, returned, reverted back to the levels it was at in 1989. In 1989, 53 women were call killed. In 2008, 76. And it is only in 2015 that the level of women killed, those numbers went back to 1999 levels. In 2018, 48 women died. And this year, as of September, 42 women have died. According to feminist organizations, it is in fact not 42, but 74. So how can it be that while overall crimes uh, levels have uh, practically halved, how can it be that we've invested so much money, so many efforts into uh, bringing these numbers down that the number of women killed remains unchanged? Is anyone aware of the fact that uh, what's at stake is in fact uh, a lot of money and no one cares about the actual victims? We know about many notorious cases when uh, women were unlawfully taken from their families. Then what we've also seen is that uh, social workers now decide whether someone has been a victim of gender-based violence. It is no longer the courts that do so. It is social workers, NGOs, and psychologists. And uh, here's a very telling example. In Italy, there's been the Angel and Demons case. In June of this year, the Public Prosecution Office brought uh, charges against 27 people, including child psychologists, social workers, and the mayor of the city of Bibiano who was accused of colluding to make uh, illegal profits. Civil servants and psychologists have been manipulating children to venal ends. Psychologists turned kids against their parents, telling them that their parents didn't love them, and they added sexual elements to children's drawings so as to justify non-existent rape cases. Tajikistan, please do submit your statement to the documentation center. I would like to give a floor to the delegation of Tajikistan, followed by delegation of Kyrgyzstan. Madam Mr. Moderate, in our country, we have undertaken a very extensive legislative basis, starting with the Constitution and the law on state guarantees on gender equality and equal opportunity, and the law on the prevention of domestic violence, amongst others. The country has also conventioned the Convention on the Discrimination Against Women and its voluntary protocol. And uh, we present regular reports on the implementation of these. The improvement of the national strategy on uh, step on building up the role of women uh, up to 2020 and its action plan. The concept of the development of families in Tajikistan. The state program on education training and promoting women managers and a state program on prevention of domestic violence 2014 to 2023 and the plan on the implementation of the plan. We have interagency working groups uh, on improving the legislation on the elimination of gender stereotypes, pre also protecting the rights of women and preventing domestic violence. We have an action plan based on the UN Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women and uh, the UN Security Council re Resolution 2021-2024, uh, years 2015-2022. We have elaborated uh, other normative acts on presenting uh, assistance to victims of violence and the standards on presenting assistance to victims of domestic violence. We are also helping women who have been victims of domestic violence. And we have uh, inspect inspectors uh, from the structures of internal affairs, 110 consultative centers at the local uh, level, 18 crisis centers for the rehabilitation of uh, women victims of violence, as well as at work of NGO. The Committee on Women's Affairs and the Family, the Eurasian Fund uh, in U Tajikistan has opened a hotline in order to prevent domestic violence. In the OSC Gender Equality Plan in the Academy of Internal Affairs of our country, since 2010, we have had uh, training uh, in order to prevent family violence. In 2012, we have held a monitoring uh, campaign on preventing gender violence. Now, we also have women involved in the Committee on Women's Affairs, where NGOs also can put together projects based on uh, social needs. 
also we are also involved in women in political affairs. Thank you. The floor to delegation of Kyrgyzstan, followed by delegation of Switzerland. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The equality of rights and opportunities for men and women is enshrined in uh, the relevant international national legislation in the Republic of Kyrgyzstan. Since it uh, became independent, we've uh, signed a number of conventions and we've sought to achieve gender parity in all spheres of our development, political, economic development, and also in the family sphere. We have a national strategy aimed at uh, promoting gender equality. It contains priorities such as women in the economy, education for women and girls, access to the judiciary, and uh, political equality. In order to implement the strategy, we also have a national action plan. Starting in January of this year, new laws entered into force, including the Criminal Code and the Code of Criminal Procedure. These were developed with due regard for the gender policy course we're on. We have sought to stamp out uh, bride nappings, and in order to do that, we've criminalized a number of acts, including, for instance, uh, forcing someone into what amounts to spousal relations, uh, forcing someone to marry and uh, disregarding the minimum legal ma marriage age when performing religious rites. We've also introduced quotas for women sitting in parliament and uh, the local knish. Gender equality is also being upheld throughout the lawmaking process. Let me give you an example. Out of 17,800 civil servants, over 7,000 are women. That's 40 percent. When it comes to political and uh, special positions, 28 percent of civil servants are women. An acute issue is uh, domestic violence aimed against women, because in fact, uh, women make up uh, roughly 96 percent of the victims. The law aimed at stamping out uh, domestic violence has received a positive assessment from the OSCE and the relevant bodies are putting the finishing touches on that law. By way of conclusion, I should like to note that uh, my republic has taken a principled stance seeking to achieve gender balance by introducing legislative and other measures. Thank you. Thank you, Kyrgyzstan. Switzerland, followed by NGO Birlik. Besten Dank, Herr Moderator. Frieden und Sicherheit, Wohlstand und... Peace and security, sustainable development and uh, prosperity are impossible if half of the population is left out. That is why it is uh, urgently important for participating states of the OEC and the organization itself and its missions and institutions should continue to promote the principles of equal equality and participation of women in all spheres of public life violence against women and girls is not only a serious violation of human rights, but it also stands in the way of the goal of gender equality. This is why we recall the importance of the Convention on Preventing Violence Against Women and Combating this uh, uh, violence and domestic violence, that is Istanbul Convention. It was ratified in Switzerland in uh, 2016. We welcome the Milan Ministerial Council decision on the prevention of violence against women. This is a very important symbol which uh, shows that the problem of sexual violence has been taken seriously by international organizations. What's more, we note Resolution 1325 of the UN Security Council. Uh, 20, we will be celebrating its 20th year anniversary next year. The resolution uh, reminds us that men and women should take equal roles in prevention of conflict and peace building and on uh, all uh, important structures. In 2017, which Switzerland passed the fourth national plan, which uh, considers all of the resolutions I mentioned above and the role of women in preventing extremism and terrorism. All of this is important for the OSCE. Now, the recommendations. Step up uh, the cooperation between the OSCE institutions, uh, field missions, and its uh, executive bodies uh, 
in uh, implementing the council resolution on the prevention of violence against women and on the implementation on gender equality action plan. But more than that, participating states should implement these decisions more effectively. Furthermore, specific measures to prevent uh, sexual harassment and to prevent uh, sexual harassment in public space, especially in the workplace. We call upon participating states to swiftly implement the convention of the ILO. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to give a floor to NGO Birlik, followed by delegation of Spain. Good morning, conference participants. We were detained at Sheremetyevo Airport in the Russian Federation by the Russian Special Services. They tried to prevent us taking part in this conference. We had to buy four plane tickets, and yet they did not let us fly out. They did not reimburse us for the cost of those tickets either. We were forced to take a taxi to the conference. Next to me is Bibi Khan Berdimuratova. She fell victim to forced sterilization by Uzbekistan. My wife, Tamara Atamuratova, is also a victim of forced sterilization. Her uterus was savagely, was savagely cut out, and we couldn't have any more children. Hundreds of uh, thousands of citizens of Karakal, Pakistan have become victims of this crime. This is a genocide. It's a crime against humanity. Today, in Karakal, Pakistan, women who are Karakal Pakistanis are prevented from giving birth to children. Everything is done to prevent them from doing so. Doctors uh, refuse to provide obstetric services. Bibi Han next to me was sterilized without her consent. She wasn't even told what was going on. She was, however, given an infection during the operation, and uh, she is no longer healthy. She has called for the doctors to be punished. She has asked for compensation, and yet the government of Uzbekistan has ignored her demands. The state security services of Uzbekistan threaten her on a daily basis. Our recommendations are the following. We want to... Uh, to demand for the government of Uzbekistan to pay out compensation to all women who have been sterilized. So hundreds of uh, recommendations can be uh, tabled, but we really have one recommendation. We want independence for the Republic of Karal Kap Pakistan. Thank you very much. I would like to give a floor now to delegation of Spain, followed by delegation of Kazakhstan. Spain, the floor is yours. Gracias, señor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Spain uh, would like to recommend to participating states of the OEC to step up their political participation of women in their countries at all levels, local, regional, and at the state level, and to prove that if we give women a voice and if measures are taken to encourage them and promote them, women will make headway. This uh, reflects the social importance of women in public economic life of every country. Initiatives uh, have been undertaken uh, but not fully uh, implemented. For example, in Bangladesh, the Grameen Bank in Bangladesh has shown that even small steps involving women in economic life have a very important impact on uh, the quality of life in the country. We know that the OSCE uh, has uh, very many um, ways of promoting these issues, for example, the uh, role of the representative of gender issues, uh, for example. Spain uh, has uh, 11 women and six uh, men in our parliament. Uh, she represents 47.7 percent of women in parliament. This goes beyond the minimum uh, Last year in Mallorca in Spain, we organized a global convention on women, peace, and security. We have really uh, made sure that we will be including women and their role in all phases of conflict prevention, because if women participate in conflict prevention, we will have a greater impact and we will prevent the breaking out of conflicts. With Finland, we launched an initiative called Commitment 2025 
to make sure that women should be fully involved in all negotiation processes and phases. There was an NGO who mentioned uh, the way in which in Spain we are wasting money because we pay psychologists to provide support to women. Well, I can assure you that Spain will continue to waste, so to speak, these funds when women are victims and when they are violence, victims of violence, that they can find in their neighborhood a technical, psychological, and medical support. Thank you. Thank you very much. In the delegation of Spain, I would like to remind all the speakers to prioritize recommendations and put them in the front of their speeches. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to the delegation of Kazakhstan, followed by Women's Support Center Public Association. Thank you for giving me the floor. Gender equality is a key component of the social modernization underway in our society. We want to create equal opportunities. This is part and parcel of our efforts to ensure that women become active participants in the political, economic, and social life of our country. Promoting women in politics so that they can accede to positions of power has become a priority in our national action plan. As a consequence of the last five years, the number of women in parliament has increased by a substantial number, and they now make up 22% of the parliament. And in fact, it has doubled as compared to the previous parliament. We have uh, 22,000 NGOs in Kazakhstan. Roughly 500 of them focus on family issues and gender policy. They make a substantial contribution to broadening opportunities for women. Over 8,000 NGOs, so roughly 37%, are headed up by women. Women in SMEs have uh, gone from strength to strength. And in fact, uh, roughly 45% of uh, entrepreneurs in our country are women. SMEs led by women make up roughly 50% of all SMEs in the country. Also, when it comes to family affairs, the position of women has improved. In 2016, our president issued a decree which set forth our gender policy out to the year 2030. When that policy was being developed, we took into account uh, our national development priorities. A key step on the road to improving the straits of uh, women in our country was the ratification of 20, uh, tw 12 international instruments on gender equality. We have uh, 21 provisions in our legislation aimed at improving the position of women in society. We've also introduced liability liability for sexual harassment and uh, other similar abuses. Furthermore, I wanted to note that what was said by our American colleagues, well, in fact, I've answered what they said. Back in 2009, in fact, we adopted a piece of legislation on preventing d domestic violence. This law sets forth the economic, social, and other aspects uh, of uh, the work being done by NGOs to combat domestic violence. We are also seeking to prevent domestic violence by introducing special requirements uh, when it comes to the perpetrators of these crimes. And I would like to remind participating states that at the end of the session we will have a time to execute their rights of reply. Now I would like to give a floor to Women's Support Center Public Association, followed by Russian LGBT Network. Distinguished Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen, I represent the Center for Assistance to Women. In Central Asia, Kyrgyzstan is a rather progressive country since we do have national laws to support gender equality and we have ratified a number of international documents on human rights. And despite of this, the political rights of women in recent years uh, have not been fully implemented. Statistics show that every year the percentage of women participating public life nationally at the local levels is swiftly shrinking. The deputy of Chukachimi talked about this. Thanks to the consolidation and the efforts of civil society for several years now, 
a great deal of work has been done to amend laws on the deputy elections to the local level. The result has been is that special measures have been taken. For example, the law on reserving one-third quota for women in the local Kishinet. Now, there has been a great deal of uh, efforts and assistance uh, by the OCE uh, that has been done in order to achieve this goal. Now, I would like to mention the next the, these recommendations. For the efficient implementation of the new laws, we need to start inform the population with regard to this new law and the stepping up of uh, women leadership in the regions of the country because uh, the elections at the local and regional level will be carried out in 2020. We need to have a state body responsible for the implementation of this law. This is because uh, there are certain uh, um, constraints with regard to the implementation of this law. We also need to boost uh, the participation of uh, the local authorities on uh, passing laws to protect human rights. Thank you very much for these recommendations. And now I would like to give the floor to the Russian LGBT network, uh, then the Holy See. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. On behalf of the Russian LGBT network, I want to express grave concern about violence against lesbian, bisexual, and queer women in the North Caucasus, specifically in the Chechen Republic. Since April 2017, the Russian LGBT network assisted 37 young women from the North Caucasus who required national and international protection. The network has registered an influx of requests since late 2000, uh, 2018. The human rights violations directed at them originate in the kinship uh, structures fueled by the neo-traditional rhetoric regarding women as a childlike figure as stripped decision-making rights of her own being. Lesbian, bisexual, and queer women in Chechnya are subjected to grave human rights violations. Their families exercise physical, sexual, and sexualized violence. These women are threatened and blackmailed by their older male relatives. Uh, lesbian, bisexual, and queer women permanently become the victims of correctional rape and forced marriages, including, in some cases, even child marriages. In, it is common for the relatives of lesbian, bisexual, and queer women to subject them to, violence, uh, to violent exorcism-like procedures that include verbal violence and severe beatings by religious officials in Chechnya. Their families submit this last their lesbian, bisexual, and queer female relatives to psychiatric facilities. In these facilities, unqualified medical professionals misdiagnose these women with schizophrenia and heavily medicate them, harming their physical and mental state. Lesbian, bisexual, and queer women often become the victims of honor killing. In 2017, the Russian LGBT network lost Lisa Nazai of a young woman who was abducted, returned to Chechnya, and killed by her family. I want to voice yet another concern about the fact that lesbian, bisexual, and queer women of Chechen origin who reside or previously received refuge in the EU member states are being abducted from these EU member states and brought to Chechnya despite their will. The families of these women are do this. Upon a voluntary return to Chechnya, LBQ women are physically abused by their relatives, are forcibly married to Chechen men chosen by the family. The network is aware of at least four similar cases of Chechen families residing in the EU, quote unquote, returning children to the Chechen Republic. The law enforcement officials support the kinship procedure are uh, produced violence against lesbian bisexual women in the Chechen Republic. Given the troubling situation of these women in the Chechen Republic, I call for the Russian Federation to finally acknowledge grave violations of LGBT rights in the Chechen Republic and start working to ensure immediate protection of lesbian, bisexual, and queer women in the Chechen Republic. Based on the recent European Court of Human Rights decision on Volodina versus Russian Federation, I call for the Russian Federation to ratify Istanbul Convention, to criminalize domestic violence, and to ensure the rule of law in the Chechen Republic and other areas of the North Caucasus. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like to give the floor now to the delegation of policy, followed by Barnabas Sound. Mr. Moderator, OSE efforts to prevent and combat violence against women and girls were fortified in 2018 through the Ministerial Council Decision 418. In that decision, the Ministerial Council calls on OSE participating states to organize awareness raising campaigns on the risk of specific forms of violence facing women and girls including through digital technologies and on their risk and, uh, and the support available for victims of such violence. In our common work to ensure the full and faithful implementation of this and all OSC consensus-based commitments, the Holy See believes that the greater focus on the issues is, and on two, two issues is necessary. First, 
The hyper and over sexualized culture that has become pervasive in our societies, in the media, in the entertainment, and in our social media is deeply destructive to women and girls. This must be challenged. Such a culture, which not only distorts the dignity of women and human sexuality, but advances an acceptance for such distortions, represents a tragic lapse into a view of women that should have been surpassed long ago. Women are not property, women are not sexual objects, and women should not have to accept that men regard them as such, or that to conform to such a distorted vision. Second, a particular form of violence di directed against women that should be given further attention is that suffered by girls, including very young girls, again because of their sex. In this regard, it's also troubling that even in the OEC region, abortion of unborn girls for the sole reason that they are girls and not boys do in fact occur. This disturbing phenomenon must not be ignored. It is regrettable that the implementation of the 2004 OSC Action Plan for the promotion of gender equality remains incomplete. The recruiting of qualified women to the OSC executive structures, notably to so-called first dimension positions, posts, is, po is particularly challenging. One might need to consider with realism the root causes and concrete obstacles that actually impair to implementation of strengthened and innovative recruitment strategies in the OECD. In this regard, our delegation would kindly ask to give additional consideration to the impact that family-friendly policies could have in this regard. The OECD participating states assisted by the OECD executive structures shall now carefully consider how to advance the implementation of this specific goals and objectives of the 2000 OEC Action Plan for the promotion of gender equality. The same should apply to the other decisions and commitments subsequently adopted. Uh, the full version of the statement will be distributed by distribution desk. Thank this you. This will be very Mr. much Moderna. appreciated. Thank you very much, Holly C. And I would like to give a floor to Barnabas Fund, followed by Leisha Mogli Kaiten for Allen. Mark Green, Barnabas Fund. Treatment of women and girls under threat of FGM, female genital mutilation. Recognizing the fact that FGM is not always addressed very robustly in many OSCE states, despite its clear violation of human rights, gender issues, and specifically the rights of the child, Barnabas Fund requests OSCE countries to, one, take FGM and the threat of FGM to female citizens and residents more seriously. Two, improve intelligence in the field. Three, improve education on FGM for children in schools and assist teachers to better understand the issues. Four, improve requirements on reporting FGM by doctors and other, other medical practitioners and social workers. Five, increase resources available to police and prosecutors to ensure that FGM is seen as a crime which is taken seriously. FGM, sometimes known as female circumcision, or female genital cutting is illegal in most, if not all, OSC countries. It can occur within states themselves, or girls may be sent abroad to countries where it is practiced. This is typically sent on holiday from school. In the UK, it's been illegal since 1985, and since 2005, it's also illegal to take abroad a British national or permanent resident, to, or to help someone trying to do this. Despite the law and general public support for zero tolerance, in the UK, there have been almost no convictions, despite an estimated figure of over 100,000 residents in the UK having undergone one or other of the various procedures. The annual incident rate is estimated at about 5,000 people. In, septu in September two 2016, the House of Commons Home Affairs Select Committee said it was a national scandal that, that there had been no successful prosecutions, despite it having been illegal for more than 30 years there had been one unsuccessful prosecution. In February 2019, the first conviction was recorded in London. In contrast, France has a much more robust policy, having recorded more than 100 successful convictions. France relies heavily on medical evidence, and it is the duty of doctors, medical staff, and others, such as social workers, to report mutilation committed on a minor. Prevalence of new cases in FGM in France has been massively reduced and the criminal sanctions are well known. Few other OSC countries have an approach 
as, cl uh, as robust as France, and we would recommend movement in that direction. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I'm always uh, focusing on concrete recommendations like the topic of the session is very much appreciated. Now I would like to give a floor to Gleche Moglikaitin for Allen, followed by delegation for Slovenia. Moderator, Burkham Luxembourg here. The Republic of Uzbekistan remains a, a patriarchal society. Women's rights are systematically violated there. Let me get the ball rolling with some recommendations to the government of Uzbekistan. First of all, we suggest stopping the practice of forcing women, especially civil servants, uh, forcing them to work the land. Next, you should allow females in Uzbekistan to set up their own NGOs and trade unions. Third, we want uh, facilities allocated for women where they could all pray together. And this is not at odds with Islamic principles. Four, Evans Asia, Isabayeva Gulchikhan, is the head of that company. And in fact, she was uh, charged without grounds. She spent four and a half years behind bars. The only thing she was guilty of was that she refused to give a bribe to the law enforcement authorities. A recommendation addressed to the United States of America. We insist that you request Konakarov to be extradited. As things stand in the Republic of Uzbekistan, there is no independent judiciary. Konakarov has uh, various criminal charges that have been brought against her in different parts of the world. For the time being, the authorities of the Republic of Uzbekistan, while they get down to implementing my recommendations, we see manure, animal manure, being used by women in Uzbekistan to heat their homes. Why are they doing that? Because natural gas is being sold to the Russian Federation and China. There are corrupt contracts which are being signed for the sale of that gas. And this is across Uzbekistan that this is happening. Thank you very much. To give the floor to delegation of Slovenia, followed by public foundation Klopp Media. Delegation of Slovenia, floor is yours. Uh, thank you. First of all, Slovenia would like to align itself with the EU statement delivered by the Finland Finnish delegation and uh, allow me to add a few remarks in my national capacity. Gender equality and empowerment of women are high on the Slovenian political agenda. Slovenia remains deeply committed to the high international EU and national standards of gender equality, which are set up and operationalized in our gender equality national program, as well as in Slovenia's development strategy by 2030. Uh, in Slovenia, uh, the increase of women participation in political decision making has been evident uh, in the past years. To overcome inequalities and gender gap in political decision making, Approximately 10 years ago, we introduced legally binding gender quotas, which contributed to the considerable progress in women's particip participation in the national parliament and local council. Uh, the number of elected women representatives nowadays is approximately 30% at local and national level, uh, but we are aware that we are not there yet as we are talking ab about representative bodies. Um, we would like to uh, commend OEC, especially ODIR and the uh, gender section in the Secretariat, uh, for its significant contribution to mainstream and integrate the gender perspective in all three OEC dimensions. Uh, we also welcome 2019 OEC-led survey on the well-being and safety of women uh, in Southeastern and Eastern Europe, as well as, well as ODIR projects such as uh, development of methodolo methodology on gender uh, auditing of political parties. Uh, in, an important Slovenian achievement in women in leadership position was the appointment um, of um, head of general staff of poli police armed forces and uh, police force in December 2018, which are both uh, women. Uh, these appointments reflect Slovenia's commitment to peace and security, also by integrating gender perspective, including empowerment of women to areas related to peace and security. In this regard, in November 2018, the second Slovenian action plan on women, peace and security was adopted for the period 2018-2020. We would also like to welcome last year's ministerial decision on preventing and combating violence against women. Addressing violence against women, the most prevailing violation of women's human rights, is, a key, is of key importance not only for women's empowerment, but also for the benefit of whole societies. Violence against women and girls is present and persistent in every country. There are no exceptions. In this, uh, it is a form of discrimination that seriously violates and impairs the enjoyment of women and girls of all human rights and fundamental, uh, fundamental freedoms. It represents one of the major obstacles in achieving gender equality. Let me also inform you about the first overall national project, Click Off, addressing cyber violence and harassment as a form of violence against women and girls, 
and a manifestation of historically unequal power relations that has been uh, implemented since 2017. The purpose of the project is to enhance the existing national activities to preventing cyber violence by including the gender perspective into learning uh, as well as um, education models and recommendations and, me uh, and other measures. Since we believe that it's important to practice what we preach, we have decided to conduct a second study on equal opportunities in Slovenian diplomacy. We will do this together with Iceland and hopefully come up with some innovative solutions to gender-specific gender challenges of our profession. And I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, uh, delegation of Slovenia. And as we are in the middle of our speakers list, I would like to, to focus on just uh, two aspects which were mentioned now. Indeed, uh, this session serves as a platform for sharing good practices. Thank you very much to, to many delegations for pointing out to an important part of our MC decision 0709 when it comes to special temporary measures. Also thanking to those uh, delegations who are reminding us that intervention should be also done on the institutional level and one of such interventions, assistance, is a gender audit of uh, political parties. Uh, Slovenia was one of the first countries in OVC region to introduce those gender audits and we very much appreciate uh, this last example. Indeed, um, if I could ask the delegation of Slovenia to submit full statement to the distribution center on vi online violence is a growing threat. It has been confirmed by recent uh, survey done by OEC, but also by the survey done by IPU PACE. Uh, this is uh, something which we should all be concerned with. Now I would like to give a floor to public foundation Klopp Media, followed by delegation of Uzbekistan. Thank you. Gender discrimination on education and professional occupation is of great concern to our program and based on the statistics by the National Statistics Committee of Kyrgyzstan and our work experience, we would like to provide several recommendations for the government officials and the OSC mission in the Kyrgyz Republic. Kyrgyzstan is dominantly a patriarchal country. People are not introduced to gender equality and women's rights are violated. There are still cases when women are kidnapped and forced into marriage by the kidnapper and kidnapper's family, and most of the cases never get reported to the police. Gender discrimination greatly affects men's and women's choice of major and career path because there are proof cases when school and university teachers were discouraging girls to study well because girls are expected to get married and support their husbands, meaning that girls will sacrifice their education and career for the sake of getting married, giving birth to children, and being the most responsible for the household chores. Therefore, the first recommendation is to provide school teachers and university professors with training on gender sensitivity, which will mainly focus on the explanation of the right of every person to study and do any type of job despite a person's gender. There is also a common belief that girls are better in sub-subjects and boys are better at STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. This can be seen and proved by the latest reports of the National Statistics Committee of Kyrgyzstan showing that medicine and education are mainly occupied by, by women. IT and engineering are mainly occupied by men. Another recommendation is to create short campaign videos that will explain the benefits of both educated boys and girls and that every person is worth any occupation despite gender. These videos would benefit greatly if broadcast widely on TV. The society has to see that the government supports gender equality and promotes equal educational rights for all. The final recommendation is to create a commission that will be able to evaluate the content broadcast on TV, published in media, and officially stated by government officials on the issue of gender discrimination. The Public Broadcasting Corporation of the Kyrgyz Republic, which has the most popular TV channel in the Kyrgyz Republic, broadcast a TV series called Actual Law, which was romanticizing bright kidnapping, physical and emotional abuse of women. And this TV series was broadcast on the national TV funded by the government. And it happened right after six months of the murder of the girl whose name was Burulai Turdalukhazi, who was kidnapped in order to be forced into marriage and then murdered in the police department. I hope these recommendations will be taken into account and greatly contribute to gender equality in Kyrgyzstan. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I would like now to give a floor to the delegation of Uzbekistan, followed by salute at Misericordia. Thank you, moderator. If I may, I'd like to tell you a little bit uh, about our experience in fighting for gender equality. In my country, women have always been respected as mothers, sisters, spouses, and mentors. This, in fact, is the bedrock uh, of uh, our mindset, our mentality. We've also enshrined 
this approach in legislation. This means that women can work and accede to positions of power on an equal footing with men. They can express uh, their opinions and uh, make a substantial input to the development of Uzbekistan. As per the wishes of our president, we are not uh, resting on our laurels. We are, in fact, making headway towards uh, the achievement of full gender equality. In March of this year, the president of Uzbekistan introduced measures aimed at uh, strengthening the guarantees, guarantees for women to be able to take part in entrepreneurial activities. There's also a committee tasked with ensuring gender equality, and the Speaker of the Senate presides over its meetings. We also have a Senate committee addressing the issue of women and gender equality. Its objectives include improving women's uh, social and political activities, ensuring that they can pursue their interests and uh, exercise their rights, including engaging in entrepreneurial activities. We also have uh, two new pieces of legislation pertaining to women. We have a law on gender equality and uh, protection against uh, violence against women. Furthermore, in our electoral legislation, we now have a 30% quota for women running for parliament. These are candidates so nominated by political parties. If we look at the current Senate, we have 22 women sitting. That's a quarter of all MPs. In the legislation, in legislative body in, as a whole, in the parliament as a whole, 16% of MPs are women. This year, the Speaker of the Senate is a woman. That's a first for us. And it means that we're one of those uh, 60 or so states where the upper house of the parliament uh, is presided over by a woman. We've created a conducive environment for women in our society, as the government has recognized main, the main international norms and standards underpinning women's participation in all spheres of public life. We've achieved a great deal, and yet we still have our work cut out for us. In order to ensure that uh, each and uh, every citizen can exercise their constitutional rights uh, with the requisite government protections provided. Thank you. To give a floor now to salute Mr. Korde, followed by delegation of Ukraine. My recommendation is to denounce the fact that promoting gender equality continues to be used to disseminate a kind of gender teaching, which in fact has nothing to do with the equality of people. This false theory makes us believe that sexual identity is not a fact of nature, as if we were not born a man or a woman. In fact, each cell in our body is sexed. Today, the gender uh, equalities, which is at the service of the LGBT lobby, wants us to believe that there is a hierarchy and inequality with regard to gender, and is thus injustice, is that sexuality can be separated from the body, that humanity is no longer made up of men and women, but finally homosexuals or heterosexuals. Instead of recognizing that there is a complementarity between men and women, which is the source of humanity, the ten of gender want to destroy the wonderful divine creation and re to replace it with illusions. For them, the women must be a man like any other man and freed from the injustice of, of motherhood. And men should be called mother. They are, it is not enough for them to live together as what for a long time was con considered to be a perversion, but to disseminate this in schools. French national education teaches sexual indifferentiation under the cover of equality and promotes homosexuality and transsexuality under the guise of combating homophobia or transphobia. One of their goals is to have us accept uh, that changing sex is normal. And so we see increasingly children have troubles of uh, identity and finish by suicide. Every t we see that adolescents uh, in the UK between 10 and 15 years of age are changing their sex. Um, according to Bernard Debré, a deputy and doctor in France, teaching gender gender theory creates, I quote, hybrid, psychologically uh, vulnerable uh, 
people which have a lot of complexes. We have seen that uh, there is a free <coughs> access to abortion pornography means uh, that they fall into the despair of being no one. We need to do away with this ideological imposture. I call upon politicians to uh, promote respectable education, which would be respectable of complementarity of gender in the wonderful diversity of uh, the world. The role of the school is not to destroy, and t parents should have the right you to submit your full statement to the Thank communication you. center. Um, I just also want to inform uh, all of us that uh, I've closed the speakers list. We have uh, 50 speakers on the list. Um, and without the further ado, I'd like to give a floor to the delegation of Ukraine. Dear Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, Ukraine continues to implement a consistent policy on gender equality as an important precondition for a sustainable development in employment, education and training, economic and social activities, and decision making. This is part of EU Ukraine Association Agreement, UN Sustainable Development Goals, and the NATO Ukraine Annual National Program. Ministry of Social Policy of Ukraine, the main coordinator of the gender equality. Reducing gender inequalities in all spheres, all overcoming gender stereotypes are included in the state's social program of equal opportunities for women and men and the national action plan of the concluding observation of the Committee of the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. The new electoral code provides for the gender quota of at least 40% of the people of the same gender in electoral rolls. In the new parliament, the proportion of women exceeds 20% and is the highest present in the parliament since 1991, past convocation 12%. Representation of women in the new government has also increased. Among ministers, 30 persons are women. Gender budgeting is being actively implemented. The government strategy on building a system of response of violence take into account the urgent needs of communities and implemental global principles. Additional coordinated support requires development of a system of the service for the victim, launching and the support of the specialized services at local community level, creation and implementation of the national information policy strategy for prevention and combating violence, launching a unified system for exchange of administrative data and case management of case of violence also introduction of call center for victims and witness of violence. The risk of gender-based violence related to the conflict are quote serious. And we need support in adopting the international protocol of the documentation and investigation of crime. The government is relying on both national partners and international technical assistance to further implementation of truly revolutionary shifts in gender equality and their prevention and concreation of violence in Ukraine. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much. Delegation of Ukraine, I would like to give the floor to independent civil society activists from Tajikistan, followed by Institute of Young Democrats. Thank you, moderator. My name is Shaman Fridiotova. I'm an independent activist from Tajikistan. The government of Tajikistan is using female students and uh, female teachers as slaves. Instead of working, instead of uh, attending classes, very often they are forced to march in parts of the country being visited by the president. The king being kept in awful conditions, standing in the cold in uh, special dresses, waiting for the Fuhrer, the Fuhrer of the nation. Some of these girls faint. For instance, last year, a student uh, from one of the regions had to attend a stadium opening ceremony. She fainted, was taken to hospital and died. Women and children are forced to orchestrate these outpourings of love, love for the head of the nation. Very often, they're forced to do this when it's very hot, 40 degrees in the mountains. Other times of the year, when it's snowing, they're standing there in summer dresses. And then the president comes out and he's wearing a winter coat. When we see that the government itself is uh, running, running roughshod over the rights of men, of women and girls, so how can we prevent this kind of violence? Of 
Young Democrats, followed by Regional Center of Human Rights. List of Young Democrats, please, the floor is yours. Okay, then we'll move to the next speaker, Regional Center for, of Human Rights, followed by Human Rights Watch. Uh, thank you. Uh, we would like to attract your attention to the situation with violation of rights of female prisoners in the occupied territory of Crimea. This group of prisoners is part of the vast problem of human rights violation in custodial settings by Russia in occupied Crimea. Since the beginning of occupation, the RF collectively neutralized the population of Crimea as well as extended the effect of its legislation on the occupied territories. As a result, thousands of Ukrainian citizens, civil prisoners, were transferred to the custodial settings located in the territory of the RF. Accordingly to the Ukrainian uh, human rights NGOs, more than 6,000 civilian prisoners, Ukrainian citizens, kept in places of detention from Crimea, and now they are in at least 75 penal colonies located in 34 regions of the Russian Federation. Due to the absence of women colonists in Crimea, every woman who had been sentenced to imprisonment in occupied Crimea is immediately transferred to serve the sentence from the Riemann prison in Simferopol to correctional facilities on the territory of the Russian Federation which was confirmed by the United Nations Human Rights Office of the High Commissioner's report in, June, uh, in May, August 16. This worsened their situation because of the poor conditions of Russian penitentiary institutions, in particular the non-provision of adequate medical care, lack of possibility to communicate with their families and relatives. According to the above-mentioned report, the official response of the Federal Penitentiary Service of the Russian Federation uh, confirms that between 18th of March 2014 and 15th of June 2016, 240 such women were transferred to serve their sentence in the territory of the Russian Federation. The information from the RF uh, requires verification since it seems understated in comparison to more than 6,000 transferred prisoners and over 3,000 prisoners still remaining in Crimea. Depriving women of the right to serve sentences in places of deprivation of liberty in the occupied territory and making them do that uh, with women citizens of the Russian Federation is a complete disregard for the occupying state of the Article 76 of the Fourth Geneva Convention. Convention explicitly requires the state of, to ensure that such persons serve their sentences in the occupied territory as well as to ensure separate maintenance of protected persons and citizens of the occupying state. Moreover, the latest report of the OHCHR in Ukraine provides another example when the Russian Federation authorities transferred a married couple from Crimea to two different penal colonies located in remote areas of Krasnodar and Stavropol Krai. The woman was transferred about 500 kilometers away from her husband and almost 1,000 kilometers away from their two children who remained in Simferopol. Such transfer and disruption of family ties also constitute a violation. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I would like to give the floor now to Human Rights Watch, followed by Institute for Reporters' Freedom and Safety. After he beat me, I narrowly escaped and went to the city prosecutor's office covered in blood, told me a 28-year-old woman who endured four years of spousal rape and abuse in Tajikistan. But as she tried to report the violence, she said the prosecutor interrupted her. Aren't you yourself to blame? He called her husband exposed her whereabouts, and told her, everything will be fine, go home. This was the story of a woman I'm calling Zibo in a report that we published just yesterday called Violence with Every Step, Weak State Response to Domestic Violence in Tajikistan, which documents obstacles to health and justice for domestic abuse survivors. Despite laws guaranteeing survivors' right to protection and social services, Human Rights Watch found ongoing gaps in police and judicial responses, to domestic violence, including refusing to investigate complaints, failing to issue in, and enforce protection orders, and treating domestic violence as a minor offense. A 2013 law in Tajikistan on prevention, the prevention of domestic violence led to important measures, such as awareness raising campaigns, staffing of some police stations with specially trained female police inspectors, but survivors, lawyers, service providers report to us that police often ignore the law and that victims lack adequate protection from abuse and importantly, access to shelters and services. Underreporting and insufficient data collection by the Tajik government make it difficult to assess the scale of domestic violence in Tajikistan, but local and international groups report that it's widespread. Women we interviewed reported enduring years of abuse, usually by husbands and intimate partners, including rape, stabbing, strangulation, beatings with sharp and heavy objects such as a shovel, a fireplace poker, an iron, 
and a chair. They said abusers deprive them sometimes of food, of clothing, and of access to toilets or the kitchen. Women said that violence caused injuries including internal bleeding and damage to vital organs. The law allows police and prosecutors to issue protection orders, but they often do not. And survivors also face a dire lack of services, such as a lack of shelters. Our key recommendation is that the Tajik government explicitly amend the law on domestic violence to make domestic violence a separate crime and to expand services for shelters across the country. There are currently only two that function in Tajikistan for a country of nine million people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Human Rights Watch, and I encourage you to submit the full version of your statement to the Documentation Center. Now I would like to give the floor to Institute for Reporters, Freedom and Safety, followed by Human Rights Movement, Birduino, Kyrgyzstan. Distinguished participants, in Azerbaijan today, women are especially vulnerable, especially those women who are trying to stand up for the rights and write about the systematic violation of citizens' rights. I would like to draw your attention, firstly, to young women journalists, young bloggers who use social networks and YouTube, try to promote pluralism and women leadership in society, unfortunately. In the past seven years, starting from 2012, when the leading journalist, Hadish Ismailva, uh, was faced with the violent uh, campaign of uh, blackmail by the government using uh, compromising elements and details from her private life. Uh, all of this continues up to today, even against 17-year-old young bloggers, uh, as we saw last year with Fatima Mulvamli blogger. The police uh, had illegal access to her telephone and tried to blackmail her. They just uh, posted on the social networks, her own personal photographs. All of this was done because she was very active on the internet. Now, Sarah Gubishmandaji, who lives in the United States, uh, who has political asylum there, is also the victim of a horrendous humiliation campaign on social networks, on TV networks. The American ambassador mentioned this uh, recently. Now, this woman is still the victim of a mass uh, campaign against herself. And she is uh, one of the important symbols uh, of the honor of journalism in Azerbaijan. But the law enforcement agencies are still not preventing attacks against her. We call upon the authorities of Azerbaijan to find and punish uh, the uh, perpetrators against the three women I have just mentioned. Those who are guilty, they are uh, in the offices uh, of the special security services of the country. Another woman who has been the victim of uh, social network bullying, we need to have systems to prevent bullying against uh, children. There was a case where a young girl threw herself out of a window of a school, and the director of the school left her there and did not call the ambulance for two hours. Statement to the Documentation Center. Now I would like to give a floor to Human Rights Movement, Bir Duino, Kyrgyzstan, followed by Delegation of Armenia. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Kyrgyzstan uh, has undertaken a number of international obligations on gender equality and the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. In spite of this, however, the main issue remains, and that is the difference between the obligations that they have signed up to and their effective implementation. Unfortunately, today, we see that we are really uh, rolling backwards with regard to protecting women. Now, after the introduction of the quote of, quota of 2017, the percentage of women in parliament was 27%. There were 24 women. Now, earlier in 2005, there were no women uh, serving in parliament. But today, in spite of the quota in parliament, out of 120, only 20 deputies are women. This is 15%. This is twice less 
compared to the quota. In government, women are also minimally represented, one out of four vice prime ministers and one minister of finance out of the 22 officials. Now, also in spite of national documents on gender equality and special laws, in Kyrgyzstan, women are victims of numerous forms of discrimination, not only due to their gender, but also with regard to other aspects that are also protected under the law. In Kyrgyzstan, they are dragging their feet on passing anti-discrimination laws with regard to their international obligations in the framework of various international mechanisms, special laws, for example, on the law on state guarantees, on ensuring equal opportunities for men and women, also has discriminatory norms against women. And by using this, they try to justify in Kyrgyzstan the ban on 400 and 50 professions uh, against women, for example, drivers, uh, carpenters, and others. Now, recommendations for the state is to pass anti-discriminatory laws based on a broadened, broadened list of uh, discrimination uh, to strengthen control and monitoring by parliament, the general prosecutor's office, and other offices of authority. We need to make sure that the country implements their international obligations and to enact them into domestic law. And we need to amend laws. Those recommendations, and, and please submit the full statement of the Documentation Center. I would like to give a floor now to the delegation for Armenia, followed by Anti-Discrimination Center Memorial. Thank you. The full text of my intervention will be submitted to the Documentation Center, and I would like to start with recommendations. Uh, to, uh, to participating states and relevant authorities, we recommend to provide enabling conditions for promotion of gender equality and to our seal respective structures to continue assisting the countries in their efforts to empower women, taking into account specific needs of member states. Uh, Mr. Moderator, the success of the Velvet Revolution in Armenia last year has become possible to a considerable extent due to the active political participation and involvement of our women. From our experience, we can reaffirm the key role um, of women in the political and social life of societies. With this in mind, the government of Armenia has been advancing equal rights and opportunities for women and men through developing a respective for normative framework, action plans, and building up institutional capacities. As regards the political participation of women, higher, higher quota for women representation in elective bodies has been set, 20% instead of former 20, and following the gradual approach, 30% representation has been prescribed for next elections. At the same time, it is important to mention about the increased participation of women in decision making, including through information and communication technologies. This is in Australia due to the high proportion of women among editors of newspapers and magazines, as well as among spokespersons of state officials and heads of information units. Uh, women are strong agents of change for peace and security. Peace and security efforts are most sustainable when women are equal partners in the prevention of violent conflict, the delivery of relief and recovery efforts, as well as in contributing to the lasting and durable solutions. It is necessary to recall in this regard the recently inaugurated Women for Peace campaign, which aims to be an inclusive platform for women and mothers to promote peace and reconciliation in the conflict-torn areas in our region and beyond. This is an illustrative example of the participation of women in the peace-building efforts. One of the recent achievements registered in Armenia regarding women's rights is the adoption of the first national action plan on the implementation of the UN Security Council Resolution 1325 this year, preceded by a broad consultative process with active participation of government agencies, civil society, and international organizations, including OSCE. Armenia considers the implementation of the resolution in the overall context of promoting women's rights with particular focus on vulnerable women from border communities affected by conflict, displaced women, and those under risk of displacement. And concluding, at international level, Armenia will advance the agenda of protecting and advancing women's rights and strengthening their role, uh, their role in public life also through the chairmanship in the UN Commission on the Status of Women for the next two sessions. Globally, we will soon be celebrating also the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, which represent an, uh, represents an important opportunity for assessment of the record of our national and international efforts in this area. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Armenia, starting with recommendations always makes moderator happy. Um, I would like to now give a floor to Anti-Discrimination Center Memorial, followed by youth, European Youth of Ukraine. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. 
lists of professions banned for women were taken from Soviet legislation. They exist in the majority of Eastern Europe and Central Asian countries of, of the former USSR. The main explanation for such restrictions is protection of women's reproductive function. However, such prohibition is influencing women's life, meaning economical situation, freedom of independent decisions on maternity issue and professional fulfillment. Such measures became excessive and go beyond strict maternity protection in the rights of all women in spite of their ability and wish to give birth. Two years ago, Anti-Discrimination Center Memorial launched a campaign, All Jobs for All Women, to eliminate discriminative acts that prohibit employment of women in hundreds of jobs, including well-paid and desirable ones. We are pleased to note that Ukraine and recently Uzbekistan cancelled professional bans for women, while Kazakhstan and Russia reviewed the list and shortened them for several spheres. Dozen jobs in such important sphere as transportation will be available for women in Russia already in January 2021. A DC memorial welcomes the first success for Russian women who have triumphed in the fight to have bans of their professions revoked. They will be able to work on already chosen jobs as truck drivers, machinists, sailors on ships and printing workers. In 2018, Russian railways came out in favor of allowing women to work in the industry. Just recently, the Moscow Metro reported that from January 2021, it will start recruiting women as subway train drivers and uh, due to a large number of job seekers, a separate training group for women will be formed. First time in history of modern day Russia, women will be hired to drive subway trains. ADC Memorial fully supports initiatives of employers and voices uh, a hope that academic institutions will change their rules for accepting women for training in previously closed professions, including machinists, assistant engineers, bus and truck drivers, ship mechanics, sailors, and others, in order they can actually start working in these positions in 2021. The access to previously restricted spheres must be guaranteed in all countries that already cancelled professional bans. Special measures should be taken to sufficiently promote jobs for women as well as to inform the recruitment departments that women are now eligible for positions that have been banned for them for decades. Almost all countries of the region already received recommendations of several UN committees to repeal discriminative uh, professional bans. Welcoming steps made in several Eastern Europe uh, and Central Asian countries on improvement of gender equality in employment, we would like to highlight the necessity of further reforms, including changes of existing negative practices. At this memorial, would like to invite you on a side event today at 6.15 on the topic of uh, gender issues. And also we would like to invite you to a side event uh, regarding to migrant children right after the plenary session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and thank you for reminding us about side events. I would like to give the floor now to European Youth of Ukraine, followed by Women's Rights Association of Iceland. We want to emphasize the extremely importance of the issues of violence against women and gender discrimination in condition of the ongoing Russian aggression against Ukraine, temporal occupation of Crimea and east of Ukraine by Russian forces and related internally displacement. These issues were reflected in the thematic report Gender Dimensions of SMM Monitoring that was published by the OSCE SMM in Ukraine. This research research emphasized the role of women's participation in local communities near the front line and some conflict-related trends in gender-based violence also as trafficking in human beings. Alas, such important OSCE report seems to be disproportional and eclectic with broad gaps in conflict-related gender issues in Ukraine. SMM OSCE researched in reports the gender disproportion in military civil administration near the front line but didn't show the common figures of such disproportion for elected local Council in other parts of the of east of Ukraine and for Ukrainian Parliament, for central executive and other governmental bodies. Also, SMM OSCE didn't reflect in report the gender situation in Ukrainian local bodies established for registration, legal and administrative services for displaced persons and persons temporarily visiting controlled territories from the occupied zones in Crimea and Donbas. More, the gender issues regarding checkpoints functioning on the Crimean and Donbas front line are not reflected in this report also as the risks for traveling women connected with totally illegal transport functioning via checkpoints. And much more, the issue of gender-based violence in groups of the displaced persons in different regions of Ukraine are not lighted. The global relevant problem of non-functioning the Ukrainian online IDPs register is not even mentioned in the report. 
Alas, SMM did not reflect in report not only the common situation with gender discrimination in Crimea, but also for occupied parts of Donbass, where the OSCE officers have some access. The special attention in this area must be paid to vulnerable situation of hundred mothers and family members of the political prisoners residing in Crimea and Donbass, also as of family members of Ukrainian army personnel residing in occupied territories. We demand to the OSCE head bodies and to participate in state, states, especially for the neutral to Russian-Ukrainian conflict ones, to enforce our attention to work and results of the OSCE SMM in Ukraine, including its observations in area of the gender dimension and condition of the current conflict, to demand Ukraine and Russia, Russia as occupying power, to fully execute the provisions of the Convention of the Political Rights of Women and the Convention of the Elimination of All of Forms discrimination against women, the relevant demands of the Geneva Conventions Thank for you very ongoing much and, situation. And please submit your statement to the Documentation Center. Now I would like to give a floor to Women's Rights Association of Iceland, followed by a delegation of Azerbaijan. Uh, distinguished representatives of the OECE states, I present this statement to highlight three issues on the discussion today, the gender income gap, the ongoing violence against women, and the urgent need for funding for civil society. I want to begin by declaring that it's absolutely unacceptable that women in the OECE states are being paid less for their work than men. The persistent devaluing of women's contribution to society destabilizes our countries and is all the more infuriating because it is preventable if only there were political will to prevent it. We urge the governments of the OECE states to move beyond petty promises and concerned declarations and to look towards more proactive ways of ensuring gender pay equality. Iceland has recently introduced legislation requiring companies and institutions to prove that they are paying their employees fairly and equally for their work. The equal pay standard is a tool which can and should be introduced in all OSCE states. I also sit here today to declare that the ongoing violence against women in the OSCE states is absolutely unacceptable. We, as a region, have both the resources and legislation available to combat gender-based and sexual violence. However, these tools are not being utilized effectively. The stories shared in the past two years on social media using the hashtag MeToo has shown to us that violence harassment, and harassment against women is rampant in our workplaces and constitutes a clear threat to the security and economic well-being of women. We urge the governments of the OECE states to require workplaces to institute gender action plans and prevention measures to combat sexual harassment and violence. And we urge the governments to actively work towards ending all violence against women and to adequately fund preventive measures, support and counselling. Finally, I sit here today to urge the governments of the OECE states to support civil society and organisations working on women's rights and gender equality. We owe our democracy to the countless of women and men who for decades have fought for civil rights and equal rights. Any and all achievements we have made in guaranteeing gender equality in our countries can be traced to the democratic activism of a strong and vibrant women's movement. In recent years, the voices of illiberalism have become increasingly loud, threatening our security and our very democracy. The best way to fight this illiberalism is to fund liberalism, to actively fund the civil society organizations working on equal rights and social justice for us all give civil society the tools they need to support our democracy. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And I would like to give a floor now to the delegation of Azerbaijan, followed by Center of Political Analysis and Forecasting, Crimea. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The full and equal exercise by women of their human rights is essential to achieve a more peaceful, prosperous, and democratic OEC area. Only with equal rights, women can have more important roles in contributing to comprehensive security in all its three dimensions. Azerbaijan <laughs> is committed to eliminate all forms of gender-based discrimination and ensure gender equality in the political, economic, social, and cultural spheres of life in accordance with the OEC commitments and obligations under international instruments. Our country has a proud history in providing an environment for women to play in an important role in the society. The first ever secular school for girls in the Muslim world was established in Baku in the beginning of the 20th century. 
Azerbaijan was the first country in the Muslim world granting women the right to vote in 1918. Ensuring gender equality is among the top priorities of state policy and guaranteed by the Constitution and relevant legislative acts of Azerbaijan. The State Committee on Family, Women and Children Affairs, as a main body responsible for implementation of state policy on these issues, carries out activities aimed at women's empowerment as well as prevention of violence against them. Besides the committee, gender focal points are appointed in, all, in almost all governmental structures and in executive institutions of all regions of Azerbaijan. As a result of policies adopted by the government, we have made great strides in achieving gender parity in state institutions. The representation of women in the National Assembly has increased from 11% in 2005 to 17% in 2015. The proportion of women appointed to key government positions has also significantly increased in recent years. My delegation here in HTM is a good example of the attention paid to the gender balance. Azerbaijan, with close to 300,000 internally displaced and 156,000 refugee women, attaches particular importance to the protection of these vulnerable groups that have suffered the most as a result of armed conflict and occupation of our territories, and allocates ad adequate resources to meet the needs of those groups, particularly through providing income-generating measures and education opportunities for IDP women and their children. As a recommendation, in light of existing OEC commitments, we encourage ADIR to pay close, closer attention to IDP women and girls in its activities. Thank you, Mr. Madrilovi. Thank you very much, Delegation of Azerbaijan. And I would like to ask any delegations who would like to exercise the right of reply to sign up at the back of the head table with our dear Rita. Um, the list is open uh, if anyone would like to, ex to exercise this right. Now I would like to give a floor to Center of Political Analysis and Forecasting Crimea, followed by delegation of Georgia. Thank you, moderator. OEC participating states have condemned violence and discrimination vis-a-vis -vis women, and they adopted the OEC action plan on gender equality. In uh, the occupied Crimea, there's a very different uh, trend. In fact, wives of Crimean Tatar political detainees are suffering. Very often, these are families with lots of children, and they're not uh, particularly wealthy. Very often, they've lost their breadwinner, and now the woman must uh, make ends meet. They cannot uh, spend sufficient time raising their children, and uh, also, they cannot uh, fulfill their own role in society. Many women have been left without husbands, and over 160 children have been left without fathers. Here's an example. What about Ms. Miev? had her husband, uh, in fact, he, w he was uh, charged with being part of his and uh, he was detained when, uh, and he was detained when going to court. That same day, in the wife's brother's house, there was a raid, the house was searched, and in fact, uh, this is just one of many cases where women have been left without husbands. There's also psychological pressure uh, being exerted on these women as they're forced uh, uh, to be separated from their husbands. Sometimes they don't see them for many months. They cannot uh, visit their husbands. And this is uh, all linked in with the fact that the Russian Federation has occupied the Crimean Peninsula. Human rights defenders who are Crimean Tatars are suffering a great deal. For instance, uh, there have been many instances of houses being searched in June and July. Blogger Irina Mamedova, for instance, uh, had her house searched, as did uh, many others, the daughter of political detainee and many other women. Attempts were made to bring charges against uh, a poet, a female poet, because of uh, her professional activities. Other human rights defenders were detained, for instance, Lvira Sudeva, and the wife of one of the political prisoners, Ms. Saliva. She was also detained. On the 1st of August, the journalist of ATEA, that TV channel, Asim Khalilova, was arrested, and in fact, she was uh, had an international warrant put out in her name. We call uh, for an end to be put to the discrimination against Crimean Tatar women and uh, any illegal attempts to prosecute uh, those living in the Crimean Peninsula. The Korgan Regional Women's Support Center. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, fundamental rights of the residents who are living in both occupied regions of Georgia are 
violated on a daily basis, unfortunately. Restriction of freedom of movement, illegal detentions, uh, ethnic discrimination of ethnic Georgians, restriction to get their education on their native language are uh, quite common bad practice established after Russia, Georgia were back in 2008. However, women's hard life in occupied regions uh, is especially noteworthy. Let me focus on two cases that were occurred in occupied regions of Georgia and rise Georgia central government's concerns. The first case is related to the Ms. Tamara Miaragashvili, who is ethnic Georgian. He, uh, she uh, is a civil activist and lives in occupied Tsinwala region. Because of her public expression of critical views, Miaragashvili has been expressing intense pressure and harassment by the local de facto authority of Tsinwala region since June 2017. She was illegally detained on June 8, 2017, and several illegal criminal cases were launched against her. Throughout her, this period, Tamara has been deprived of her identi uh, identity uh, document and personal belongings. She is restricted to move from occupied region to a Georgian-controlled territory, and her rights to freedom of speech and expression is violated. Another concerning uh, case is related to Georgian citizen Ms. Maya Otinashvili, who was illegally detained uh, for so-called illegal border crossing reason by the Russian Federal Security Service officers in the vicinity of village Khudvaleti. That village is located near to the occupation line at the territory controlled by the central government of Georgia. The above mentioned case raised Georgia's central government concerns for several reasons. She is a lady, she, is, uh, she has uh, three underage children and was illegally detained exactly at the territory controlled by the central government of Georgia near to her house. And besides that, in such cases, locals are released after two or maximum three days. Uh, however, Ms. Uh, Otina Shvili was kept in prison for 11 days and um, was sentenced illegally to one year prohibition. Georgia calls upon the Russian Federation as a power exercising effective control over occupied regions of Georgia to stop its discriminatory policy against the ethnic Georgians living in occupied region, respect and pro protect fundamental rights um, of the people who are living in both occupied regions and to restore respect for Georgia's territorial integrity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Delegation of Georgia. I would like to give the floor now to Tardi Korgom Gun Regional Women's Support Center followed by Office of the Commissioner for Human Rights, Ombudsman of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Good afternoon. My name is Khumran Vishana. I'm representative of an NGO in Kazakhstan. I am the head of a public association of a regional center for the support of women. For over 20 years, we have been grappling with the combating of the issue of uh, trafficking of people and women. At the outset, I would like to mention some statistics with regard to one region of Kazakhstan. This is the Volnatinsk region, where over the past year, the number of crimes, so uh, domestic crimes, have grown 50 percent. And the number of contacts to crisis centers have also gone up. This is due to two facts. There is more domestic violence and women know more about their rights and the law. The number of applications to the Committee on the Rights of Women always goes up uh, after their aware awareness raising campaigns. These information campaigns are held regularly with the support of state bodies as part of the social program and thanks to government grants. A great deal of work is being done as part of the state grant program and with regard to the development of uh, regional organizations for women in the countryside for them to have access to lawyers and psychologists. So these rural women centers uh, help uh, women victims to solve the problems and to effectively use their ration, to rationally use their economic resources and to use their time. Also, the cooperation with uh, rights uh, organizations with the law enforcement agencies is going forward. We have education programs for law enforcement officers. This uh, includes education programs on this topic and to introduce this into schools uh, that educate uh, police officers. There's also cooperation with uh, the police, education, mass media, and other 
NGOs uh, which hold uh, broad uh, awareness raising education public campaigns. They publish brochures uh, and information uh, documents uh, on preventing it, violence against women. In spite of all of these measures, uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, violence against women is on the rise. This is why I have two recommendations that I would like to inform you about. Thank you very much. Recommendations to our documentation center. Recommendations are always appreciated. I would like to give a floor now to Office for the Commission of Human Rights of the Republic of Azerbaijan, followed by delegation of Belarus. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I would like to mention that uh, Azerbaijan had joined to almost all essential international documents which uh, protect women's rights and ensuring equality. Now, Azerbaijan state has uh, made certain accomplishments in relation to gender policy, which envisages the ensuring of equal representation of women and men in all spheres, including uh, state structures. I would like also to mention that Azerbaijan Ombudsman is being organized activity in ensuring women's rights and gender equality on the basis of 12 priority uh, directions of Beijing Declaration and Program for Action. Azerbaijan Ombudsman appointed a special advisor on women's rights and gender equality to better protect women's rights and promote gender equality. Ombudsman gave uh, proposals, annual reports concerning the draft law on reproductive health and requiring to accelerate the adoption of the draft established Almany Fund, increasing the number of women health con consultation centers in urban and rural areas, expanding advocacy work on family planning and reproductive health to the community level, and re-establishing the bank of breast milk. Taking into account uh, Ombudsman's proposal, a national action plan on prevention of gender-based discrimination in Azerbaijan for 2019 and 2012-22 has been revised and was drafted a new national action plan for prevention of selective abortion in Azerbaijan for 2019 and 2022. The working group, which includes also Ombudsman, drafted the national action plan on elimination and combating domestic violence in Azerbaijan and national action plan on gender equality and Azerbaijan national strategy for children, which are expected to to be adopted in the coming days. One of the leading universities in the country, Baku State University, on the initiative of Ombudsman includes human rights and introduction to gender subjects to its academic curriculum in law and other faculties. Azerbaijan Ombudsman Office jointly with the UNHCR in Azerbaijan implemented prevention and response to sexual and gender-based violence in internal displaced communities project in the frame of which trainings were held in the capital and in region and numerous publications were prepared and Dispensed. Also, I would like to say that Azerbaijan Ombudsman proposed to ratify Istanbul and Lanzarote Convention. And Ombudsman Office, together with the uh, Press Council and uh, Council of Europe, organized serious training in the frame of gender equality and media freedoms project. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much indeed. And I would like to, to remind all of us that a few years ago, obviously, OCD produced a very practical handbook for national human rights institutions on women's rights and gender equality. And we always uh, stand ready to engage with NHRIs uh, to discuss international good uh, practice. Thank you very much indeed. I would like to give a floor now to the delegation of Belarus, followed by NGO sociologist. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The issue of uh, gender equality in Belarus is considered to be one of the ways in which we can catalyze the achievement of the SDGs. We have a number of mechanisms, including a, a mechanism which, which we use to achieve gender equality. As of 2018, in Belarus, the Women's Human Development Index is equal to the Men's Human Development Index. These uh, top marks are underpinned by a high level of education, which women have received, the fact that they're participating in the workforce, and that we listen to the women when taking decisions. We've also worked uh, very actively with the OSCE and the gender section on these uh, gender-related issues. In fact, we have uh, mentors associations which we're setting up for women in Belarus. In order to promote uh, women in leadership and women in public life, we have uh, taken part in the 
OCs and uh, ODEA's umbrella project on democratization in Belarus. In September of this year, we held a third meeting of uh, ODEA representatives, members of parliament. It was a round table. And in November of this year, we're going to hold the third international forum of uh, women leaders. These events have been organized by the ODEA in the past, and roughly 20 countries usually participate. There are going to be discussions about women in politics and business, combating violence against women, strengthening networks, and establishing coalitions of women leaders, equal opportunities for men and women in education into ALIA. We hope to continue this uh, constructive partnership going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much for your support. I'd like to give a floor to NGO sociologist followed by Set My People Free. Thank you very much. Today, we have heard certain comments with regard to Tajikistan, and there were statements made. I would like to also make a certain comment. Um, information uh, regarding the fact that in Tajikistan, no uh, people are prevented from wearing hijab is untrue. Let me start by saying that uh, in the Arab it from Arabic, hijab uh, means any clothing which covers a man or a woman from head to foot. In the Western lexicon, the word hijab means uh, the headscarf that traditional Muslim women wear. Certain people here are uh, leading the world community astray. In front of me, you can see there is a woman sitting next to me. Uh, she is a uh, my a countrywoman. This is uh, the national hijab, the national clothing, which is fully in line with our traditions and with our tra religious school, Hanashitism. She wears it freely, and, and no one is preventing her from doing so. My other colleague sitting next to me is also wearing the traditional uh, uh, hat. It's traditional uh, in our country, and no one is uh, preventing him from wearing that either. This is why I wanted to say that our colleague, uh, as a traditional woman from Tajikistan, she has a great level of self-awareness as a Tajik woman, and she will continue to wear this clothing in spite of the bullying uh, from some people in our country who are trying to force uh, Tajik women to wear clothing which has no history in our region. And where, due to the weather conditions in our country, they cannot wear uh, this other clothing. Now, this clothing is also worn in the countries of the Middle East, and they have their own traditions and their own climate to account for. We heard here that there is a practice of virginity tests. This is also untrue. There are recommendations uh, in uh, the wedding, in the marriage bureaus to uh, have a uh, checkup uh, to see whether or not the future spouses are ill or not, to avoid conflicts in the family. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, set my people free, followed by the delegation of Czech Republic. Thank you, moderator. Uh, one challenge that set my people free sees in OSC participating states is uh, as, uh, see in participating states in ex uh, experiencing and um, in achieving gender equality is the existence of parallel legal realities for different individuals within a state. In ODIR's um, guidelines for review of legislation pertaining to religion or belief that was on outside on the table, um, regarding family law, it was noted that Islamic law typically makes it much easier for a husband to divorce a wife than is permitted by state law. And uh, it was recommended that state laws should be examined for neutrality and to determine whether limitations on rights to manifest religion are proportionate to legitimate state interests. And we wonder, what, what does this neutrality mean? And in a way, it's the recommendation weighs religiously mandated restrictions on the right of the woman against state interests. Where is the voice and perspective of the woman? Our concern in OECD states is that religious ideas per se are given a louder voice than the individual voice and choice of the woman. It should also be noted that in majority of Islamic uh, regulated states, women are not allowed to make the decision to divorce her husband. 
um, at all in many cases, and also when it's allowed, it is oftentimes not on an equal footing as that of the man. And many women um, who have fled Islamic countries and come to, uh, to get freedom in the West arrive only to experience that the state, uh, state authorities listen more to religious communities than the voice of the individual. And our recommendations are the follow following. Clearly con condemn honor-related crimes, both uh, in the political sphere and the educational sphere. Ensure women uh, the right to choose their religion or belief. Women who leave Islam do not, um, or do not follow its laws often face pressure, threats, and surveillance from their families and the religious communities, even within OSCE states. And we would also therefore urge states to recognize ex-Muslim women, both converts, atheists, and secular uh, women as a specific vulnerable group and tra uh, train police and decision makers accordingly. And, um, and also ensure that in these unrelated crimes, the full involvement of the state to investigate these crimes. Because oftentimes financial, uh, financial excuses or the complication of the cases is used, but these, these have to be uh, uh, investigated, otherwise there won't be an end to this violence. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And I would like to give a floor now to the delegation of Czech Republic, followed by Institute of Young Democrats, who missed their chance earlier, but this is your last chance to speak if you are in the room. So please, the delegation of Czech Republic. Thank you for the floor. Uh, Czech Republic aligns with the statement of the European Union, and we would like to make a statement in our national capacity. The government of the Czech Republic considers the issue of gender equality and the prevention of gender-based violence to be its priority. A 2016 study, which was carried out by a Czech NGO, Profem, found out that 27.7% of women in Czech Republic had experienced domestic violence, and one third of these women had to seek medical treatment as a consequence of intimate violence. The same, same study has also concluded that the economic impact of domestic violence on the health sector in Czech Republic was approximately 71 million euro annually. The Czech Republic believes that gender equality measures are more easily implemented when they are framed by a medium-term strategic framework. As such, in 2014, we had adopted our first national strategy for gender equality, and we are currently in the process of drafting a follow-up national strategy on gender equality. The Czech Republic's strategy is supplemented by multiple action plans, including the action plan on the prevention of domestic and gender-based violence, the action plan on the implementation of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325, of women, peace, and security, and the action plan on the balanced representation of women and men in decision making. Thanks to the strategic framework and the continuous effort of many stakeholders, we have managed to improve the services for victims of domestic and gender-based violence. Among these, the establishment of new specialized therapeutic centers that are covered from public health care insurance can be mentioned. We also work on the development of programs working with per perpetrators of domestic and gender-based violence. For example, since 2017, thanks to the adoption of the Act on the Liability for Offenses, perpetrators of intimate violence may be ordered to take part in appropriate training on anger management. In 2019, the Czech Republic celebrated its 100th year anniversary of the first election in which women were allowed to vote. Despite this, women account for merely 22% of the members of the parliament. And we believe that unfortunately, when you leave women out of the parliament or in decision making, you also leave women's issues out of the discussion. Hence, we would like to thank ODER for their proposal to organize a seminar on promoting women's participation in political parties. We are happy that the, the seminar is going to take place on the 31st of October under the auspices of the government commission of for human rights and that multiple political parties represented parliament are already confirmed, have already confirmed their attendance. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed the delegation of Czech Republic for those important remarks and, and I encourage you to submit the statement to the documentation center. Now I would like to give a floor to our last speaker instead of uh, Young Democrats. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Moderator. 
Women have always played a key role in Azerbaijan over the centuries. As per our constitution, the fundamental rights and freedoms of all citizens of uh, Azerbaijan are equal. Men and women are placed on an equal footing at the state level, at the government level, and at the civil society level in Azerbaijan. What we've been doing is implementing a systematic policy aimed at achieving equal participation of men and women in all spheres of public life. We've paid particular attention to women's leadership, women in politics. That's uh, of utmost importance. Over the last few years, the number of female MPs has increased, as has the role played by women in the political life of the country. We've also sought to combat violence against women. As you probably know, there are one million refugees in Azerbaijan. Many of them are women who were forced to flee their homes and settle in Azerbaijan. Very often they were subjected to violence in Armenia and as things stand, 1,500 people, according to the official statistics that is, 1,500 people remain in uh, the areas which have been occupied. Uh, they're held hostage there. 1,500 of those hostages are women. Turning our attention now to another policy area, what we're trying to do is involve women in efforts to promote uh, peace and security. Why do I want to focus on this? You see, the conflict settlement uh, process benefits greatly from the involvement of women. It helps us to bolster security. Another key component of the work we're doing is broadening the economic rights of women in Azerbaijan. Over the last decade, the share of women in business has increased, has increased substantially, and uh, women entrepreneurs uh, are quite numerous, especially when we compare it to the situation 10 years ago. And this process is ongoing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last uh, intervention, we are closing our speakers list. I would like to thank all the speakers for their active participation. And would like to recognize that uh, 11 participating states delegations asked to exercise their right of reply. Mm, I would like to allocate a long one minute uh, to each of those delegations. Um, and we'll start with the delegation of Belarus. As a response to the statement of the United States, I would like to note that the share of women with higher education working in the economy of the economy is 37 percent, and 28 percent are men. The share of women in parliament is 33 percent out of all of the deputies. Women are also broadly represented in state management, 67 percent and 56 percent at um, deputy level. Due to the broad uh, presentation of the top Topic, uh, and religious organizations. There was not a separate law on a special law on domestic uh, violence, and we are now updating the current laws on this front. Thank you very much. Uzbekistan. Next, Uzbekistan. Delegation of Uzbekistan. Uh, then I would move to the delegation of the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I wish to exercise my right of reply in response to the statement of movement equality for all, which called for the United States action in the case of Gulnara Karimova. In March of this year, the U.S. Department of Justice indicted Gulnara Karimova with another Uzbek national for conspiracy to commit money laundering, which allegedly deprived the Uzbek people of nearly one billion U.S. dollars. Additionally, individual sanctions imposed in 2017 against Karimova for corruption under the Global Magnitsky Act were extended last December. We remain cognizant of the gravity of her alleged crimes and continue our work to appropriately repatriate funds to the Uzbek people. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like to recognize that uh, the delegation of Uzbekistan is in the room and I would like to give them the floor, please. I'm very sorry. Uh, thank you very much for giving us the floor. 
We want to exercise our right of reply, responding to what was said by civil society representatives. Now, I don't want, want to lecture you about uh, what we're doing in Uzbekistan to promote uh, women's rights. I will uh, respond to the specific cases which were raised. Sterilization, that was something which was flagged up. Let me give you some statistics. Annually, in uh, Karakul Pakistan, in that republic, which is a republic within uh, Uzbekistan, in fact, uh, the birth rate is such that there are 35,000 additional children born. As for sterilization, these operations are never performed unless we have the consent from both the woman and her husband. Thank you. Thank you very much, Uzbekistan. Delegation of Tajikistan, please. Mr. Chairman, we would like to react to the statements made by certain terrorist and extremist organizations. They continue their policy to discredit the government based on their own interests and selfish goals. The incidents here stated are not true. They have substituted false lies for facts. The cases mentioned are completely different. For example, to Mr. Korbonov, there was an attempted suicide during the transfer of the person, and 33 police officers were fired. Also, people they said that people had died at official events. There have uh, been crimes of domestic violence, and the authorized uh, bodies are undertaking measures within the law. Using these facts to say that the government has not done anything is untrue. We have already stated our official position with regard to Shabafa. With regards to virginity tests, this is also false information. After the family code in 2016 was amended, we have an obl we have uh, these tests. Uh, uh, medical tests for the health status of the couple and it's regarding their health, not virginity. Also, with regard to the information in Uzbekistan, which have been falsified, and we know where this information comes from now. Kyrgyzstan, followed by delegation of German. I'd like to respond to the representative of the club civil society organization who spoke about uh, women's rights violations in Kyrgyzstan. Gender equality is one of the fundamental freedoms. This is enshrined in our constitution. It is, in fact, put into practice as we Im fulfill our international obligations in all spheres of public li life. The fact that uh, a girl, Gunlai, was uh, kidnapped in order to be married off and then she was killed, this is uh, a flagrant case of violations. And of course, it caused an outpour, an outpour of outrage in society, and measures were taken at the government level. As things stand, as per our criminal code, two participants in the kidnapping, two of the perpetrators, have been charged. Also, five law enforcement officers have been, in fact, convicted and sentenced because they were to blame. They did not uh, create the conditions for preventing the committing of this crime. By way of conclusion, I'd like to say that on our side in Kyrgyzstan, we're doing everything within our power to ensure that we protect women's rights, to combat uh, domestic violence, and all other forms of violence as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. The floor to the delegation of Germany, followed by the delegation of France. Thank you very much. I would like to say a few words uh, with regard to Istanbul Convention. This convention was approved uh, by the Council of Europe in order to combat uh, violence against women and domestic violence. It has been a milestone as far as Germany is concerned in our job 
of uh, preventing violence against women and girls and domestic violence. However, we do understand we do have the principle of the rule of law and the presumption of innocence. This is uh, fully uh, in line uh, in Germany's law and uh, our constitution. These provisions are, of course, also used when we combat domestic violence and violence against women uh, by the authorities of Germany. Thank you. Thank you, moderator. It's going to be very difficult for me to run through all of the points raised by Salut and Miséricorde because they're very nebulous. I will focus on three points. First of all, in France, all citizens must be respected regardless of their sexual orientation, their gender identity because human rights cannot be divided. There's no hierarchy of rights. All of the rights must be upheld. Second, combating LGBT phobia at school is part of our national strategy. After all, we want to create a culture of respect, respect for one another. Last but not least, the French action plan for preventing uh, hate against and discrimination against LGBTI people is aimed at uh, ensuring that we prevent anti-LGBT acts uh, and also punishing them. And in fact, uh, Unfortunately, we were shown that this plan is necessary, and we deplore the comments that were made against it. Thank you. Thank you much indeed, France, for those important remarks. So now I would like to give the floor to the delegation of Poland. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, using my right of reply, I'd like to stress that Poland remains committed to com combating discrimination and violence against women in all their forms. We remain advocate of the human rights of women and are dedicated to respond uh, to challenges. Um, to achieve full equality between women and men. We are part of numerous binding international agreements which guide us in this respect. And here I would like to uh, also um, refer to the work of the government planning potentially for equal treatment uh, established in 2016, who presents to the Council of uh, the Ministers the annual action plan on equal treatment um, and reports uh, on its implementation and also is engaged in a number of projects aiming at uh, promoting equality. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to give a floor to the Russian Federation, follow, followed by Finland on behalf of the EU. Thank you. We would like to use uh, our right to reply uh, in line with the statement of the United States. So we would like to draw the attention of colleagues to the situation with the violence in the United States. Is that under statistics presented by organizations in the country, over 20, 12 million men and women in the United States are victims of violence from their partners. Almost 30% of women have become victims of rape physical violence uh, or persecution uh, by their partners um, or harassment. We are especially alarmed by the situation with regard to migrant women in the United States. We have regular information from international and national NGOs on the southern borders of the United States. A great number of women come up against uh, abuse uh, by the customs officers, violence, uh, and uh, uh, humiliating uh, conditions uh, of detainment and also the separation of their children. Thank you. This is delegation of Finland, followed by delegation of UK. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I would like to pass the floor to the representative of the uh, EU. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. In reply to some remarks made during the session questioning the value of certain regional uh, instruments, as well as questioning the need to address domestic violence, we would like to say the following. Uh, we remain committed to combating all forms of violence against women and girls, and alongside the EU member states, the EU signed the uh, Council of Europe Istanbul Convention, which is now the world's most comprehensive treaty on combating violence against women and girls, focused on preventing violence, protecting victims, and ending impunity of perpetrators. We recommend the participating states to give consideration to signing and ratifying relevant regional and international instruments, such as the Council of Europe Istanbul Convention. In reply to Salut et Misericorde, let me just say that the gender equality is a matter of human rights, of democracy and justice. It is instrumental to conflict resolution and peace building as it enables more legitimate and sustainable peace processes. This is why gender equality and violence against women and girls, I mean combating violence against women and girls should remain high on our OEC agenda. Regarding LGBTI, let me just say that LGBTI persons have the same rights as all other individuals 
No new human rights are created for them and none should be denied to them. We as the EU remain committed to the principle of the universality of human rights. Thank you very much, Delegation of EU. And I would like to now give the floor to the Delegation of UK, followed by Delegation of Armenia. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'd like to respond to the speaker who raised the issue of female genital mu uh, mutilation. FGM is one of the most extreme manifestations of gender inequality. It is, is it, it's a human rights violation that can result in a lifetime of physical, psychological, and emotional suffering. The UK government significantly strengthened the law in 2015 to improve protection for victims and those at risk, and to break down the barriers to prosecution. This includes a new offence of failing to, uh, to protect a girl from FGM, lifelong anonymity for victims of FGM, and civil FGM protection orders. 296 FGM protection orders have been granted since their introduction in 2015 to the end of September 2018. Uh, and in response to another speaker, I'd just like to say the, U the UK today is a diverse and tolerant society. We've made great strides in recent decades to support lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. We make a vital contribution to our culture and to our economy. Yet despite these advances, we know that LGBT people continue to face significant barriers to full participation in public life in the UK and in the OSC region as a whole. We will continue to work to ensure that the UK is a country that works for LGBT people and to ensure that transgender people are treated with dignity and respect. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Delegation of the UK. And I would like to give the floor to the last delegation on my list, the Delegation of Armenia. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. With regard to some comments relating to Armenia made by a civil society representative from Azerbaijan, which apparently copies and pastes some parts of her interventions under different topics of discussion, let me provide a brief historical overview. In 1988, during pogroms in the city of Sumgait in Azerbaijan, hundreds of Armenian people, including women, even pregnant women and children, were indiscriminately killed, raped, maimed, even burned alive for the only reason of their Armenian identity. Those horrific attacks were a direct result of vicious, racist, and Armenian propaganda by Azerbaijani authorities laying the grounds for future mass violence. The Sumgait pogroms were the beginning of violence against the Armenian minority, which escalated later to Kirovabad and Baku, culminating in forcible expulsion of around 400,000 Armenians from Azerbaijan, and in the early 90s war in Nagorno-Karabakh, when the same practice of mass atrocities with mutilation of bodies and beheadings of Armenians was continued. Azerbaijan has taken steps to cover up those crimes against humanity, but even more disturbing is that the perpetrators of those events and similar violent attacks are glorified in Azerbaijan, which completely contradicts the depiction of their country, which they are trying to impose here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and I would like to request, uh, recognize the delegation of uh, Azerbaijan ask for the floor, and I give you the floor. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Actually, in reply to the delegation of Armenia, it is Azerbaijan that suffers from the occupation and aggression by Armenia, and this is Azerbaijan that has 300,000 internally displaced and 156,000 refugee women. It was Azerbaijani women who faced mass atrocities by Armenian forced, uh, forces during Hojala genocide. And uh, in reply to the gentleman who is extremely striving to appear as an expert on all topics of this year's HDM by taking floor and on all sessions and speaking off topic, my delegation would recommend to obtain more precise information of today's reality in Azerbaijan in order not to mislead the audience. Furthermore, we call on to take necessary measures towards him since he was filming yesterday's afternoon session and the video was posted on social networks with a comment that the point of order raised by the delegation of Canada was directly addressed to my delegation, whereas it was not the case. By doing so, he is not only distorting that uh, what took place, but also attempting to interfere to relations between countries. And as a tradi tradition, this gentleman was speaking off topic on this session too, and specific cases raised have been addressed by my delegation during previous sessions. Therefore, we do not see the necessity to repeat it again. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. Uh, and this closes my list uh, of uh, delegations who would like to exercise their right uh, to reply. And as we started five minutes uh, later, I think it's fair to give a floor back to uh, our distinguished introducer, honorable member of parliament, Ms. Surabayadeva, and ask her for brief uh, observations, concluding remarks from this very lively session. Thank you, dear moderator. I would like to thank all of the speakers for their recommendations in the area of gender equality. As a member of parliament and former chair of Women Caucus, I will always stand for the equal women rights, for equal rights in general. 
In Kyrgyzstan, we are planning to bring a new, fundamental new to our region law on anti-harassment. And here I would like to mention a case that I was personally facing harassment inside of the parliamentary building. And the most embarrassing thing for me was that there was a lack of support from my colleagues, lack of support from the mass media as well. It's really embarrassing and humiliating. So I guess not only in Kyrgyzstan, in the whole region, it's, it's going to be very important law. And I hope our neighbors, con neighbor countries from Central Asia will follow us. Uh, my recommendation would be short. All of us are working on implement, implementing human, human rights and women's rights as a part of the gender equality, still needed help. Lots of done, but more still is expected. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I would like to announce that this session comes to the closure. I would like to first of all thank introducer, all the speakers, the audience for their active and older participation. I would like to thank the interpreters. Uh, remind uh, our dear participants that the speaker list for the next session will be open one hour before the session starts. Um, please uh, leave your handsets and receivers in the room. I would like you to invite to a number of uh, interesting side events which will take place during the lunch break. And on personal note, as this is Friday, I would like to wish all of you who are staying in Warsaw lively and very peaceful weekend. Please recharge your batteries because we will start again on Monday. Thank you.